Hi guys. Welcome back. Oh, it feels like forever, hey? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, we're cooking today. Yeah, I'm glowing. She's a married woman. <laughs> so good to be here. Oh, I was like a little bit nervous to come back to stream today. I don't know why. Thanks guys. Yeah, it's good to be back. I mean, we really only missed Sunday together last week, but like that one day is just makes the week so much longer, right? Until we get together again on Friday. I hope you guys are all good. Hi, Mickey. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was a busy week. Like it just flew by. We were off until we went back to work on Wednesday, Thursday. And then we ended up picking up Hitch. I don't know if you guys saw that at all. But Sam totally stream sniped Hitch and we brought him back here. We fed him and sent him on his way to the ferry yesterday morning. That was really fun, hey? Like, I didn't even know they were planning this throughout the day. But yeah, we got home from work and Sam's like, are you okay if I go get Hitch? And I was like, sure. Like, I don't know what we're gonna feed him, but we can definitely do that. It was awesome. He is such a nice guy. Like. If we would pass up that chance, I think we would regret it, right? We had so much fun last time he was here. So he was joking. He's like, I'm the two-timer at Cook with Kate household. Because he's had two meals with us so far. Hi, Scooter Beach. Good to see you. 17 months you've known him. Yeah. Well, I mean, we picked him up last year. And that was in the winter time sometime. So it's been a bit since we've seen him. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for the congrats, guys. That was a blast. I'm so happy that you guys were able to be there with us on our special day. Lady Bonfire, thank you for the host. Okay, so that's like our craziness that happened this week. Other than that, just chilling, kind of getting back into the groove. Yeah, seeing us cross streams, I was like, oh, I'm already hosting him, so this is gonna be perfect. <laughs> oh thanks bonkman yeah we got a lot of messages actually from our family like on the day of and then even days afterwards they're like we just watched your ceremony on twitch like so happy that we could watch that and like get the chance to do it so maybe that's the future of weddings with like this pandemic stuff right Taz, you went on an emergency beer run when you saw that was happening, just pounded beers like you were at a wedding. Yeah, one of my favorite comments from someone, I don't remember who it is, I'm sorry, but someone's like, this is the first time I have attended a wedding in my underwear. And I was like, it might not be the last. <laughs> what cross stream were we on? So we ended up, like, I don't know if I would call it sniping Hitch because he was talking to us as well. So we ended up picking up Hitch because his new thing, what he's doing, if you guys have never heard of Hitch before, he is a Canadian streamer as well. Typically he would hitchhike everywhere. So he has gone to many Twitch cons hitchhiking. And he was actually on the main stage last year at the San Diego Twitch Con, which is really cool. But now, since he can't hitchhike because of the pandemic, he's gonna bike across Canada. Sam and I kind of like calculated out, it should take him about like 70 days. He's planning on doing 100 kilometers a day-ish. So yeah, really great kid. I mean, he ended up popping a tent in our backyard, like legend. Just such, such a good guy. So go give him a follow if you have never watched his streams. And I am typically hosting him when I'm not on as he streams for a long, long time. Okay, guys, into what we're cooking today. Some dessert. So we got some baking going on and then a very tasty black cod dish. Uh, my favorite black cod dish. Same with Sam. We're super pumped about it. And it's actually from a very famous restaurant in LA. It's called Nobu. And the recipe is actually from Food and Wine. So obviously they did like a little interview with the chef. You may have to try both of these. Oh man. Okay, so first things first, the fish. That will be like sort of for lunch is, we'll just end up cooking my piece for myself. I'm not sure what time Sam will be home from work. 
but we'll have it nice and fresh and then when he gets home I'll cook his up for him because well we don't like to cook fish ahead of time and then reheat it right so it says a signature at Nobu restaurants this sweet savory fish dish has been cloned by chefs all over the world Nobu marinates the black cod in a good deal of a sake miso marinade for two to three days, but the fish is also spectacular if you marinate it only overnight in just enough sake and miso to coat. So we're gonna fast track this, vacuum seal it. I didn't want to not show you guys the marination process and I have done this not doing it like two or three days at a time and it's still so delicious. It's, it's kind of hard to mess up black cod because it's such a fatty fish. And where we are at, so on the west coast of Canada, black cod is actually one of the more expensive fish to buy. You guys probably did see me filleting the fish on stream. If you go back in the VODs, you will see me cleaning up the fish as we got them obviously whole, but they were just gutted. So we had to do the rest of the work. Hi, Jim, good to see you. And that was that. So if you guys wanna see how we broke down the fish, go back to the previous VOD uh, three weeks ago now. Yeah, I think about three weeks now. So that's actually gonna be where we start is marinating the fish. And then we'll just pop that into the fridge, let it go while we do everything else. Super, super simple. When we go to cook it out, up, take it out of the marinade and it's just a really quick pan fry, probably about six, six to eight minutes, maybe. You're hungry right now? Yeah, what can you possibly do about this? I suppose you need to find a snack. Yes. Okay, other recipe. So they are linked here as well for you guys. Two recipes today. Found a really nice recipe for the strawberry rhubarb. We're doing mini tarts today. So little bite size ones is I have one and a half dozen on order. So I have someone picking up a dozen today, six regular, six gluten-free crust. So I'll show you guys how to make a gluten-free pastry crust. Really simple. We're just gonna switch out all-purpose flour for a gluten-free flour, one to one. Super simple. So that is that set. And then we have people coming tomorrow to pick up another six. And then I thought I would make six for Sam and I because we all know what happened last time we made desserts for everyone else we never got any and that was so sad <laughs> okay so let's make our list got a couple things going on today nice to stay organized how is everyone else's week it feels like it flew by for me but i hope everyone else is doing good hanging in there with the gluten-free do i have to add in the xanthan gum to it I don't believe so is the flour blend I got wherever I popped it is a just a one-to-one -one switch out. So this is what I looked for and it was actually on sale. So I was like, well, I know that I'm gonna be cooking for a celiac, so I might as well get some flour just to have. So that's all it is. Oh, I think it's gonna yeah. work good. This is my first time actually working with a gluten-free flour blend like this. Cool. Viyoon, ah, oh, my man, 27 months, hey? Thank you so much, Viyoon. I hope you are well. Also, hello, White Dove. 27 months, what? <laughs> I can't even believe that. Yeah, Jim, never mind the week flying by. What about like just the entire year, 2020, just gone? In five days, we're halfway through. That's actually pretty crazy. Oh, Who am I cooking yeah. for that celiac? So we have a friend of ours. His girlfriend is celiac. So she politely came over, met us, and asked us if we could cook for her. And we said, of course. Also with Bonkman with the resub. <laughs> yeah, not, 
Not quite the 27 months that Vune had, but you're getting up there, Bonkman. Six months together already? Yeah, forgot that I needed to do this. Thank you so much, Bonkman, for always sticking around, giving us so much good insight to the dishes that we cook. Yeah, woot! Thanks, guys. Vune, it's been both a rush and at the same time, it went by so fast. It's been crazy, crazy, crazy. Okay, first things first, marinate the fish and then we'll just pop that back in the fridge. After that, I think it is wise for us to make up our pastry crusts for our tarts. They do get a par bake before we bake them with the filling. So there's kind of two steps there. So first one, because we're doing celiac, we always do the gluten-free stuff first if we are also working with wheat-related products afterwards, right? We want to be very, very aware of any cross-contamination because we don't want to make anyone sick. So I'll do make the gluten-free crust. And then after we make the crust, they do have to rest for about half an hour in the fridge before we roll them out. After we do the gluten-free crust, we'll do the regular crust. And then while those are resting, I thought that would be the perfect time for us to do our filling. So our strawberries and rhubarb, we would chop up, mix it with sugar, vanilla, probably a little bit of like lemon zest and juice. Gonna be so good. Yeah, you know what's cool? I get to call you Mrs. Kate now. It was funny. I think my mom corrected herself the other day, actually. I was like, yes. I am my missus. Scooter Beach, this is what I'm using. So I have a couple like different sized ones. And this is, so these little tart pans, not even gonna joke around right now. This is from like little mini meat pot pies that we got from like the frozen section when they were on sale. And then we just saved the tins after and rewashed them up, obviously sanitize them. And so we have 12 of these ones. This is what I'm gonna give away. We're, we're also charging $3 a tart, by the way, guys, if you're wondering what the price point is. And then these are ones that I've previously purchased from a superstore or like a no-name brand. And they're just a little bit deeper. So it'll be interesting to see the difference of how those two shapes bake up. What, you just messed yourself up on kebab and borek? <laughs> okay, in the best way, nice. I did get married, Jim, yeah. Crazy little covid wedding here at home because it was so rainy so yeah guys there we go if you want to check out the ring shout out to sammy maybe we'll see him today we'll see okay back to our list marinate fish make gluten-free crust make regular crust make the filling for the tarts and then I will say roll out crusts and then par bake. I think it's about 10 minutes. And then you can literally, after they come out of the oven par baked, literally just pour your filling in back in the oven for about 15 minutes and then you're done. And then for the topping, I thought this would be really delicious. I was torn between doing like a oat kind of crumble topping on top when you bake it the second time i was like eh, that's maybe too much work and then i was like oh i have cream cheese in the fridge i need to use up so we're gonna do a vanilla kind of cream cheese drizzle on the top once they've been cooled off kind of to cut the like tartness i guess from the rhubarb i like to do like some kind of creaminess <laughs> Thanks, Jim. Yeah, I assumed you were already married. We were pretty much at that point. It's just official now, I guess. <laughs> D Kizzy, you like my overlays. Did I create them? No, I did not. I, they were actually created by a close friend of mine that I used to work with, and he's actually a brewer. But on the side, he likes to do a little bit of graphic design. And yeah, shout out to Matt. 
I know he watches every now and then, but absolutely adore my overlays. This is what we started with. And the fact that we haven't really had to change our overlays in the past two years, I am so happy with them. He really like hit it out of the park on the first try. Aw, thanks, Vune. Yeah, my little beachy dress. My grandma was like, you looked like a goddess. I was like, thanks, grandma. Thanks, Kizzy, yeah. He's not really doing it anymore. Otherwise, I would totally push you his way for like commissions. Yeah, but sad to say, I mean, I, I approached him the other day to like try and do our new starting screen. And he's like, sorry, like I'm too busy at work right now to do any more stuff. Yeah, okay, I will let him know then, Kizzy. Yeah, it was wedding-y, but also summery. Thank you, Scooter Beach. <laughs> Considering I bought that online without even like trying it on or really knowing what I was getting into. I just wanna finish this list here, guys, and then we'll get started. Okay, bake tarts, cream cheese topping. So, most of the day is going to be baking and then the last little bit will be our little lunch because it's always smart to do all your baking first that way it can cool off before people come to pick it up and then when you're done cooking you can have some lunch should be pretty perfect so going along with our miso black cod today just a simple i was going to do some sesame rice so we'll boil some rice toss it with a little bit of sesame oil and toasted sesame seeds and then we're going to grill up on our indoor grill pan because I know you guys love that. And I know that also not everyone has a big green egg outside. So usually like once a week, I try and do something that everyone can make for themselves. So on the grill pan, we'll do broccoli and some purple cauliflower that we had left over. A sauce to go with those vegetables. This is something that I learned from David Chang, one of his dishes. It's a scallion and ginger kind of sauce with lime juice and garlic in it. And it's really refreshing and super good with vegetables. So we're gonna make up that little sauce to go with the veg. So fish, rice, vegetables, pretty healthy. Balance out our dessert for today. Boom. What are you guys cooking or eating today? I know Vune just got into kebab and borek in a very good way. That sounds so tasty. Here she is, guys. We have three really nice pieces of sable fish. So June 1st is when we did all of this. So that was already like a month ago. I was pretty accurate then saying it was like three weeks ago when we cleaned it up. Nice view. Pizza from scratch yesterday. It was nom. What kind of toppings did you do? Potato, frozen burritos. Oh, you're sad about that. There is. I don't know, there's nothing wrong with that, I, I find. Like, don't be sad, guys. If anything, you should be happy that you have that food, right? <laughs> Bonkman, I don't really have anything cooking yet. Keyword yet. Chicken breast in the fridge that needs some attention. Salami, shrooms, onion, matzah, nice bune. I mean, that's really all you need, right? You don't gotta go crazy. Okay, let's get our miso out. So I have a soy miso, but obviously you guys are more than welcome to find whatever miso works for you. So this is the brand we have here. It's Amano and it is organic. This one, the Aka version is soy, like I said, but I've also seen like a barley miso and they make like three or four different varieties. So if you are celiac, you could also find one that works for you. So we'll grab that out. 
And then it's just like rice wine or mirin or sake. And then just a bit of sugar. Really, really simple marinade. Vune, don't be sorry. I love when you're in your silly moods. I'm into it. Greek, how does it feel to be actually married now? Mm, not really any different. There's just like a new piece of jewelry that I have to worry about not losing. <laughs> it's, it's more stressful actually. <laughs> Oh, hi, Sammy. He's taking a painting break. Sammy's painting up two people's houses today. We're fixing it up. Okay, I'm gonna mix up the marinade in a bowl and I wanna reuse this vac bag. Bag. So I'll pour out some of the juices in there and then we'll pour the marinade back in, give it a little massage. Good to go. Oh no, my food saver is stuck, guys. There we go. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, nothing really, Vune, except just our tax bracket now. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, Sam, one of the things that Skits said for some feedback on the starting screen, they're like, what about like every now and then just like a shooting star? But I think we would maybe have to change how long the loop is for it then. Okay, let's open this up and drain the stuff out first. And I'll just like prop it up. Let's have a look at the ring. Okay, not too long. Oh, there we go. It's like pretty simple. I want to get these like soldered together now so that I have less of a risk of losing them. <laughs> yeah, the shooting star should really be just like meat floating across the sky. <laughs> Just like having random food flying across, hilarious. So these pieces of fish that we're working with today, obviously if I turn it over, the skin is still on and I think that fish really benefits having the skin on when you cook it. It just keeps it a lot more moist. And then there will be some pin bones that we'll have to take out once it's cooked. Is the thing with black cod or sable fish, whatever you wanna call it. I think I'll just call it black cod today. Keep it simple. Is it's really delicate, the, the texture of the meat. So if we were to try and take the bones out now, it actually tear up the meat. So that's why we do it after it's been cooked. We did not, yeah, we did not end up putting a big green egg on the starting soon screen is it was originally there, but we just felt like it didn't really fit. But we maybe incorporated into something else, right? So that's how I keep my miso is it comes with this little piece of plastic over top to begin with. And I find that really helps it from drying out in the fridge because this will usually last me like a good half year, this amount. What is it, 400 grams worth? Vion, you think I wouldn't get that? Black cod, call of miso. Are you doing like a call of duty joke? I actually got it. You should be very proud of me. <laughs> I have to like somewhat know games if I'm gonna stream on Twitch, right? 
This is a gaming platform, isn't it? Okay, so I like to use a little whisk to kind of just get the miso out of there. And for our three little fillets, they are roughly around four ounces each. Do a little bit more. That looks good. That's like two tablespoons. And then just press that back over it. So that just helps the air from hitting it. Done. Nice and safe. Fermented beans. Yeah, that's exactly what miso is. Here, I'll read you what it says because it's actually pretty interesting. It says, since 1939, the Amano family name has stood for quality and naturally aged miso. Amano miso is created with select organic ingredients, including whole soybean, sea salt, and koji. So koji is fermented rice. Drawing on three generations of Japanese miso tradition, Amano miso is handcrafted and barrel aged for up to a full season. Up to, I like that. So every miso is different, right? So good. So yeah, salted soybeans that are literally left to like go bad, right? Is what fermenting is. And it's so flavorful. I'm gonna put the sugar in here next and then we'll slowly mix in the rice wine. We don't need a ton of sugar here, guys. So I'm doing like half a tablespoon. Is this will help when we go to cook the fish, it will help it caramelize up, right? Get out, ah, it's flying everywhere. Let's see if I can loosen that up. So we're just gonna make a little paste. That's a trick your Okinawan ex-mother-in-law uses. She'll use a bit of plastic wrap pushed down as airtight as possible. Yes, I actually love that you told me that. That makes me happy. Usually if I find that the product is packaged like that already, I usually just kind of follow suit. It's like, well, if this is how you started here, I'm, I'm just gonna keep doing it. And yeah, it, it has worked for sure. Okay, loosen this up. Just kind of mash it up to begin with. Sean Walls. Thank you for the follow. Oh no. Okay, hang on a sec guys. Butcher Shop is calling me. I'm actually gonna mute it this time. <laughs> This just in, we have beef eye of round for Rouladen on Sunday. Sammy's gonna pick it up on his way home. Woohoo! Also, looky loose 
Looky Loosel, thank you so much for the thousand biddies. Congrats on the wedding. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Vune, why is there no hype? Yeah, I'm in. That was actually, so the Rouladin is Titan Uranus. You guys know Titan from chat, our beekeeper. That is his request from like months ago is we've been trying to source beef. So $5.29 a pound in the bag versus if they trim it up for us, $8.29 a pound. So I'm saving like three bucks a pound just by doing the trimming myself. Amazing. So I might have one more phone call from them is they're just gonna give me my order number and the total. So just be aware guys, okay? Okay, back to it. So we're mixing up our marinade for our black cod. All we have in the bowl so far, two tablespoons of soy miso, half a tablespoon of sugar, and about two tablespoons worth of rice cooking wine. So mirin, sake, whatever you have on hand. I don't often keep like a sake on hand. I mean, number one, it's, it's pretty expensive. And number two, I don't use it for very many things. Okay, we are almost there. We're gonna get this pretty smooth, but probably not like perfectly smooth. Oh, nice Scooter Bee. You started doing that too? Well, it's good to know that like other butcher shops are doing that. And yeah, ours is really good. Like they know us now that things like the eye around they'll be like well do you want to trim it yourself this time or you want us to do it typically we always do it ourselves right so when they start to know you it gets even easier yeah yes it looks like thai peanut sauce no you do not want to take a spoonful i mean this will be really nice and flavorful for sure but definitely not the same as peanut sauce i think i'm gonna use my little wine wine bottle to prop up our bag so I can pour in the marinade. <laughs> yeah, it saves a lot doing the trimming yourself. I'm gonna do a little fold over, create some structure here. And then the other thing I was gonna say, Scooter Beach, is, well, you also learn new skills, like doing your own meat trimming, right? Gotta get this in the front part too. There we go. We'll give that a little massage and then we'll seal it up. Pro chef skills, you know it, Greek. Okay, so that's how that looks. Obviously kind of try to coat all of the flesh before we seal it up. And then if you're not gonna do it in a bag, just make sure that if it's in like a bowl or something, just all of the fillets are completely coated in the marinade. Oh, nice scooter beads. Yeah, you're gonna get like a whole, a whole prime rib roast and do up like your own steaks and stuff. Okay, I just gotta be really careful when I go to seal this because I don't want to suck up any of the marinade, right? Be so messy. Go quick. As easy as that. So instead of this, you could totally use a Ziploc. Hi, Titan, good to see you. Oh, your ears must have been burning. Titan, so happy to say that we just got the call from the butcher shop and we're gonna get a beautiful beef eye of round roast for your roulatin on Sunday. We got some German food on Sunday, guys.
you forgot to do your cold shower yesterday greek keeping you cool it is like very hot and humid here today whoo wee okay let's put that in the fridge guys maybe every like hour or so we'll just give it a little massage Gonna put these two things away and then it's time to get into our tarts. And I'm gonna tie my hair back. Oh, the health benefits of a cold shower. Nice. Neurogenesis, what? Yeah, about time, exactly, Titan. We've just been waiting for like months. Oh no, Titan's grumpy. He just got mad at the hospital and HR at work. Good. I've only had to do that like once and it didn't go well either. <laughs> okay, gluten-free. Tart crusts, guys. I am going to use the pie crust recipe that is linked there with the filling. And so the recipe we're using today, it says it makes six four and a half inch diameter tarts. I think I'm more than safe if I just do a one times the recipe for our six celiac ones and then we'll triple it. Now we'll double it for the other regular tarts, but we are doing two separate crusts today. So gluten-free first. Yeah, have you ever been so hungry that you considered eating Taco Bell? Not in a long, long time, dude. I'm happy to say, yep. Yeah. Hi, Dongs for the good to see you. Oh, man, Titan. Yeah, you're waiting for the results. What? Well, hopefully nothing crazy is happening. Just gonna get this little bowl out. And then just a quick hand wash here. You're ready for some crazy cooking. Is that what that emote is? Okay, other things for our crust. Flour, salt, sugar. Good thing we didn't put the sugar away. Salt, cold water as always, and then butter and sh vegetable shortening. I like using the pie crust recipes that do butter and shortening. I think you just like save a little bit of money, but I also like the flakiness of it. It really does work well and I find it's almost easier to work with too. Yeah, we're ready for some knife rage. <laughs> yeah, Taco Bell. For a long time though, Taco Bell in North America was like our only version of tacos that we knew, right? Tender flake. There we go. Rhubarb is criminally underused. My rhubarb has come from a province over, is when my brother and his girlfriend visited last weekend for our wedding, is I asked them to bring a bunch of rhubarb for me from their garden, is their plant was like massive when we FaceTimed before they came. So yeah, I was like, bring me as much as possible. 
And then whatever we don't use, we will probably like sous vide so we can pasteurize it in the bag. So vacuum sealing and then cooking it under pressure for, it only takes about 15 minutes and then it will go in the freezer probably to use that the rest of the year. Woohoo! Nice, work was paying you while you're waiting for your test results. That's awesome. Okay, gluten-free flour. My first experience with this. This is new. Hi, Scat. How have you been? He had the great toilet paper depression. That was just hilarious. That like started out of Australia. Okay, to start, we need three cups of flour. This is what I'm using. So one to one is you're able to substitute it in place of all purpose flour. Let's hope it works. I think this bag was about $14. It's not cheap either. And I guess we should like see what's actually in it. So rice flour, both white and brown rice flour, potato starch, sorghum, tapioca, and xanthan. Okay, Scooter Beach, there's your answer right there. So it has the stabilizers already in it. One, two, three. And gluten-free flour needs those stabilizers because it's missing the gluten, the, the elasticity that you would get from wheat flour. So that's why you have those additives in there. Yeah, you were away for like a month, Scat. I know. How was the wedding? It was awesome. Yeah, we ended up actually just doing it from home because it was pouring rain that day and everything went great. Yeah, you should check out the VOD. Thanks, Fune. Titan, I am so happy to hear that. Your bees are doing great. Once again, thank you for your service to the world. The world does need more bees, my dude. Okay, next up in our dry ingredients for our gluten-free pie crust, one teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of sugar. Next time you go to the bee supply store, you'll pick up a few things to send to us. Are you sending us bees? This is madness. <laughs> okay, butter, one and a half sticks. This is gonna make a lot. I, I have a feeling we're going to be reusing some of the leftover gluten-free crust in like the regular stuff, which is no problem for sure. But I think this makes enough for like a bottom and a top. And a third of a cup of vegetable shortening. So let's get that first. I gotta go grab some more butter. Gotta love our little measuring units on the box, right? Make your little nick there. Yeah, Slimgo, like... Strawberry rhubarb. 
is my jam. And I refuse to buy rhubarb from the store. So luckily my brother brought some over, but we also have a little rhubarb hookup here. I just haven't asked them for any yet. Okay, so shortening is all cubed up. The only thing I want to do before we add any of the fat into here is just give this a little whisk up. Just to combine the flour with the salt and the sugar nice and evenly. And then the rest of this we'll do by hand. <laughs> yeah, no one ever uses those marks to measure. Come on now. That's way too smart. <laughs> Ooh, a watermelon. We actually had a really nice watermelon last week. It was so juicy. Okay, just going to grab that butter. Be right back. Fresh out of the freezer. This is going to be perfect for our pie crust. Okay, so one, one stick of butter is half a cup, right? A stick of butter is half a cup. So this is calling for one and a half sticks of unsalted cold butter. Watermelon is a super fruit? Yeah, is it real butter? I believe so. None of that fake stuff. Would I agree that some people eat to live and some live to eat? Yes. Yeah, totally. I'm with you on that. Like, I've definitely met people that just don't really care about, like, food. And they literally just eat to have sustenance and obviously so they don't die. <laughs> and then there are people like Sam and I that it's like, we live to eat. Is like, food is huge in our lives. So I, I'm with you, Jim. I think there are definitely two different people. Okay, that's that. So we can save that little nub for our next crust. What are you guys talking about? Watermelon is a berry? Now you just have a confused Kate. That is going to be a good amount of crust. This one's going to be a bit hard to cut through because, like I said, I just pulled it out of the freezer. But I always find serrated knives really work. Because then you just rip through. Just careful, okay? <laughs> Literally telling myself to be careful. Hey, Jake the Snake. How's it going? 
Have you ever had fresh churned butter? I don't believe I've ever had like fresh, fresh churned butter. Oh, actually that's a lie. That's a lie. Once upon a time when I was young, I am sure that I actually did have it from one of my mom's sisters. So one of my aunts, she has been, or she has had dairy cows for as long as I can remember. Or like how about when the whipping cream is, is so thick that you can't even pour it. Oh goodness. Hey, 23 Jane. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I actually did my own makeup that day. I was like, I can do my makeup. I just cannot do my hair. So thank you for that. Cause I was like pretty nervous. Uh, obviously I'd never really wear that much makeup, but it worked. Okay, there we go. Now we're getting a grip on this here. Yeah, this is seriously gonna be such a good crust with the cold butter. Can't go wrong. When in doubt, just forget the butter in the freezer, guys. <laughs> Scat, you want to learn how to make key lime pie. I think key lime season just finished. I could be wrong, but I did see them for a few weeks here in the stores, but they're gone now. Whether that means the season is done, I don't know. But there is something to be said about like having a proper key lime pie is you should taste the difference of the limes. Okay guys, learned something new today. Watermelon is a berry. <laughs> Scientifically, a peepo. Okay, that's way more fun to say. Yeah, no, Scat, the season's over. ZM, KJ, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Okay, we're almost done the really hard part. Put that aside for now. gonna just do a little wipe here okay now we're getting into it with our hands so we gotta go pretty quick what's good Kev I don't know man life life's good things are good here sun is shining a pumpkin season yeah right around the corner no we just got into summer Okay, so to start with our pie crust, I always like to toss the fat with the flour first, kind of coat it, and then it doesn't stick to our hands as much. Yeah, high 80s. We just have a ton of humidity the last few days. It's like not rocking hot, but even just the humidity really takes a toll. Okay, so that's all tossed up. And now all I do to start blending this together is literally like take, take a good bunch in your hands and then I just kind of start making fists and smashing it and pressing it in between my fingers. Yeah, Greek, hey, it's like so humid. But that's what they were calling for. I guess, honestly, I, I wouldn't want this weather for the wedding, right? Is it would be too hot. Mm. 
Maybe I should get a bigger bowl, guys. What do we feel? Berries develop from a single ovary in the flower and must contain more than one seed. That is so interesting. Those are like frozen butter pieces are pretty rock hard. I might have to pop this in the fridge for just a bit or like let it sit out just so they can warm up a touch. So I might actually switch up gears for a sec here, cube up that other butter as well for the remainder of the pie crust, and then we can start working on the filling. It's just a touch too cold. I guess there is a, there's a limit of coldness for butter. The only other thing that we could have done to kind of fast track this along is I've seen people using a cheese grater to grate the butter in for crust. That maybe would have been a bit better. So next time, that's what we should do. Yeah, we're gonna roll it out anyhow. So gluten-free crust, we'll just put that aside. And then, like I said, whatever extra we have from the gluten-free crust, we can just mix that into the regular stuff and re-roll it out. I am not worried about that at all. Or I suppose the only other thing I could do is just pack it up and put it into the freezer for next time I need it. And then maybe I don't have to make any, right? can also do that. Makes sense. Okay, bigger bowl. <laughs> this will be way easier to use. So let's just do the same amount and that will totally be enough. So three cups of all-purpose flour this time. One, two, how perfect is that? Three, and now our teaspoon of salt, tablespoon of sugar. Give that a little mix. One third cup of shortening. Okay guys, out of all, all different fruit pies, what's like your favorite pie? Mine is either strawberry rhubarb or cherry. Yeah, strawberry rhubarb or cherry. Use our little measuring again. Just gonna go a bit more. Just have a touch, touch too little butter, but that is okay. So cube that. Triple berry or boysenberry. Nice. Peach cobbler, yum. That is such a good one. That's like a Southern one, isn't it? Cherry for you too, mythical. Yeah, there's just something about it, right? Key lime or blueberry for scat. Yeah, I'm surprised I don't 
like obsess over blue blueberry pie more than I do because I absolutely adore blueberries. I don't know, just not my favorite. You wanna make some huckleberry, but you haven't gotten around to it. Yeah, when it comes to pie, we'll pretty much eat any of them, right? Yeah, not that we're picky, but we do have favorites. That's allowed. Nice, this butter is already softening up. Shouldn't be too long before we can finish off these crusts. I'd rather have it too cold than too warm. I'm just zoned into the butter, guys. This relaxing music. All this butter that's going on in the kitchen right now. Oh, I wanted to ask you guys, are you ready to cook with Sammy tomorrow? Redeeming. Anis Opterix's menu redemption for cooking with Sammy. <laughs> Unreal. A coffee crusted rack of lamb. Yeah, we lucked out. The lamb was on sale this week. Like 12 bucks a rack. We're like, is this a joke? We made it, friends. We made it. <laughs> there goes two pounds of butter. Toss this up. Yeah, very good deal. Meat seems to be super cheap in North America. You could never afford all the meat that we buy. I know. I mean, the other thing is, Vune, like we always talk about is, is you really just have to know the prices, where to shop, et cetera, right? And watch for sales. Like we don't, the way that I plan my menus is I like to base it around the sales in the stores for the week, rather than like making a menu and having to buy something that's not on sale. So we like to stock up on the things when they are on sale and then we can kind of just pick and choose from that later on and I think that Canada maybe is like pretty reasonable price point on on meat for sure and the other thing I will also say is that our meat here is just raised a lot better sad to say <laughs> Not bashing my Americans, but you guys know that too, right? It's like our food laws are much more strict than America's are. So even though the meat is like on sale, I know it's not for like the wrong reasons, right? Do I have a dedicated meat freezer? We kind of, I guess, yeah. But we have been thinking about like getting a proper one it, when we do want to start ramping up our little home business here. We've been watching those prices too, Vune, and, and like watching the used sites and stuff for people getting rid of them. 
because we do at some point want to get like a half cow and a half pig and like butcher it ourselves and then pull from that meat throughout the year and there's no way that we can do that without like a literal meat freezer the biggest meat producer in germany got shut down last week oh my gosh vian that's pretty crazy Yeah, we've been having some shutdowns as well, but the only thing we've noticed was really with the beef, and that's it. Oh, yeah, bad health. Over a third of the 3,500 employees got infected Ugh, in the same week. That's the scary thing, too. Okay, I'm good with that. The rest of the butter just has to warm up a touch. So we'll put that aside, nowhere near our other crust. Opposite sides of the kitchen. And now let's start chopping up our strawberries and rhubarb. Make our tart or pie filling mixture. Clean up our cutting board. Good afternoon, Slim Shady. How's it going? Good to have you back, man. Clean up all of the butter. leave the gluten-free flour out but let's put the tender flake away back in the fridge so it stays nice and cold oh no yeah it's hot full of virus here in south florida my dude be safe okay sympathies to all infected but it's going to impact meat prices yep yeah i feel bad for everyone that gets infected too right because it's not like they're trying to do that all it takes is one person. Okay, for the fruit tart assembly, so the filling, they are calling for four cups, fresh or frozen fruit, so we can use whatever here. Raspberry, strawberry, rhubarb, blueberry, sliced peaches, apricots, or a combination. So today, strawberry rhubarb a little bit of tart and sweetness going on absolutely love this combination then we need half a cup of sugar depending on the sweetness of the fruit so because our rhubarb is more tart we probably have to add closer to three quarters of a cup of sugar hi Cabri. thank you so much yeah thank you for the love my dude <laughs> Titan, that's so, that's actually so true. Like, I'm not going to repeat that, but yeah, I'm with you, man. Okay, so fruit, sugar, they say zest and juice of one lemon, which I absolutely love that flavor as well. And then the citrus juice or the bit of acidity actually helps like firm up the fruit filling. You love that girls call people dude. <laughs> well, I'm a dudette. Dudes and dudettes. And then to go along with that, just a pinch of salt. And then to keep our fruit filling from being too watery, a quarter cup of cornstarch. So what they say...
Okay, they don't say anything for assembling the filling. My guess here, let's mix the cornstarch with the lemon juice as like sort of a slurry and then that will omit, omit any lumps in the cornstarch because typically you don't just like add a powder into there. So we just want to be careful when we add the cornstarch, no lumps at all because otherwise they will cook into those lumps and that's not good. Nope. Yeah, let's close the barn door. All the animals are out of there already. Come on. Yeah, come on. What are they doing? Okay, I'm getting a big old metal bowl here. Pop that beside our cutting board. Just gonna also kind of estimate how much fruit we need to cut up. So I'm gonna lay out all of our tart shells too. I'm gonna do a guesstimation. So we're doing two dozen. Two dozen tarts and then half, half a dozen is going to be celiac. worth of fruit. I mean, we might have a bit left over, but I'd rather have leftovers than end up with not enough to fill all of our tart shells, right? So we'll double the filling recipe. And then our gluten-free shells, just keep those on a complete separate pan. Yeah, just for my safety, <laughs> gotta keep an eye on all on where all of our knives are. Thanks, Slim Shady. Yeah, that one missing is this serrated that I was using to cut up the butter. <laughs> just in case it got misplaced, right? <laughs> I love you guys. Okay, I'm gonna cross off a few things here as well. So I am crossing off our crust because we do have everything in the bowls and we just have to mix them up. So crossing off, making the fillings for the tart too. And then once the fillings done, we'll finish off the crust. I think that's perfect. Okay, eight cups. So let's start with the strawberries and I will wash them as well. Very, very wise. <laughs> yeah, Titan. I need a knife like that. That's like almost four cups right there. Really nice strawberries. I might have to have a couple, couple of snacks. Okay, so that's that. And then our rhubarb. I'm gonna take the really nice red ones and then also if there's any that are maybe looking not so good already, use those up too. Do this one. I like how it's like kind of split open. So crazy. Perfect. Okay, let's wash our berries up and then we'll top them and cut them into nice small pieces. 
Yeah, I, I really wish this recipe kind of gave you a guideline of how to prepare the fruit. forever okay let your berries just dry off a bit and then yeah I'll give the rhubarb a little wash too even though it looks pretty clean better safe than sorry it did have a long trek from Alberta Blessings for your company. Congrats. We'll dry those off. That's so good, hey? You're doing it. Does anyone, or like when you were little, did anyone ever like rip off a fresh stalk of rhubarb and like dip it into sugar and eat it? Yeah, you're doing it. <laughs> Still can't believe it. You're half scared to death and the other half is also scared to death. I read a really good podcast, the or listened to a really good podcast the other day, Vune, about like turning your fears and anxiety instead like into excitement and it just like transfers over so much better i've been following it and yeah it really works instead of being like super anxious just get excited instead and like think about all the good things that can happen instead of worrying about all the bad things that could potentially happen right You've never had rhubarb? Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm going to cut into like this little stalk because it looks super good, but let's, let's try it. So this is what it looks like. I don't know if I'll get a focus there when we cut it. So it's kind of like got these fibers all the way through, but it's going to be really, really sour. <gasps> Whoo! It's so, so sour. My eyes like twitching right now. I never got the carrot flavor until you just said that, Mew. I was like, what? Yeah, it's like a red colored sour celery. So that's a really good way to describe it. Sometimes we have to peel the strings off as well. What do you guys do? Do you usually peel it? I really like the red color, so I don't often peel that off, but it is feeling a bit stringy. How is married life? It is going great. Yeah, thank you so much for asking. Really not, not much different than engaged life. But it is really nice to have it like official. Okay. I'm only gonna peel the really big stalks. That's what we're gonna do. Cause the little piece that I had from the smaller stalk was not stringy. Hi, Uncle Stinky. How are you? Good to see you. Yeah, Sammy's at work guys. If you're wondering where the Sam man is, he is painting houses for two people today 
It was an apartment complex, so first and second floor where there was a a flood, a blow in the the major water line in the wall. Why am I taking the red bit off? Just because on some of the like thicker stalks, it's really stringy. So I was just worried that maybe it wouldn't cook down as well as like these thinner ones. Also good to see you, Flower, my fellow Islander. But yeah, I did want to keep some of the coloring, so that's why we're only peeling the bigger stalks. There we go. <laughs> yeah, questions ending with for the rest of my life. Just have a different ring to them, right? Okay, I'm gonna trim up some of the ends here before we start chopping. That looks good. Cooking girl, good to see you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I love that you guys loved the wedding. Can honestly say it's something that I never thought I would do, but I'm happy that we did do it. Because yeah, we got to share our special day with a lot of special people too. Okay, so I'm cutting the rhubarb really nice and small for this. Because, well, something like a tart is we want it nice bite-sized pieces. So when we either like cut into it or bite into it, it's not difficult to eat. You don't have this like huge chunk of rhubarb that you're trying to cut through or bite through. So go in half lengthwise on these really thick guys. And then in half one more time. That's a good start. Okay, line everything up. I'm gonna actually cut that in half, super long. And now we're gonna go all the way across. A bit of normalcy. That, that's the other thing that I thought it would bring to Twitch is like, I feel like the internet just needs to like, see love, <laughs> feel the love. into the bowl. The best wedding you ever attended? Oh my gosh, thanks man. <laughs> there were definitely more guests than we originally anticipated for. <laughs> About a hundred extra, but that's because all of you guys were there, right? Like, wow, like this is bigger than we ever would have thought it would be. So thanks, friends. Keep going here. Slice that in half. Just makes it easier to cut 
when it's not super long. Keep going. So I'm trying to do like a half and half strawberries and rhubarb amount. So four cups of each roughly, which equals out to one liter each as well. Oh yeah, I wanted to let you guys know, so oh, real quick. Yeah. Huh. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. No time off for the 18 months. Ah, oh, a year and a half already. Thanks guys for all the resubs today. Keeping our little community together. I hope you are well, staying safe and healthy during these times. Okay, so real quick is my brother and his girlfriend obviously they were able to pop out here for the wedding and he's like or they're like we didn't really know what to get you for this year so he hands me this little block of maple wood he's like this is like an intro into your guys's gift and we're just like what what he's making us a massive like butcher block with it's gonna be like a foot thick so he has a wood shop at home in Alberta. Yeah, not a new kitchen, but like a huge butcher block on casters that we can like roll around. It's gonna be amazing. And he's like, you guys need to talk to me and like let me know if we want like any like drip trays or anything like that put into it. Heck yeah, exactly, Vune. Bring on the half cows and half pigs. Yeah, he's like, you'll be seeing us again in like, another year or like next year because they have to deliver it we're like oh we'll come pick it up he's like no 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 no. it would like crush your car <laughs> i was like okay we won't pick it up <laughs> so excited for that i think the photo that he showed us there was only three layers worth so far Yeah, you called it Greek, exactly. And yeah, it should match our other cutting board here. Okay, last few stalks of rhubarb. And then we'll finish our crust so they can rest up in the fridge. Slice that up. Good little uh, knife skill workout today with this rhubarb. It's a good dessert to make. You see something made from what you thought either another countertop for the egg, which you don't know why. <laughs> don't ever say that to Sam. <laughs> but on that note though, Greek is we do need another like wooden table for our slicer is right now it is on the old egg table and well it just takes up a ton of room inside so probably either gonna like make a new table for the slicer to sit on that's really sturdy because that thing is i think like 300 pounds so our original table would not hold yeah, a couple of, a couple investments to make in the next bit and then we're set. We'll get there, guys. Yeah, table with wheels always. You can roll them around. 
That way you can always keep it clean underneath. Casters are always a good idea. Go, go, go! There is that. Now we're gonna switch gears for a little bit. Just gonna wash up the board and my hands. Rhubarb staining the the wood already. Has lots of pigment in that skin. Okay. Soap and water, and then we're doing celiac stuff. Yeah, that is that is well Greek, is like you can roll it out of the way when you don't want to see it. Nice, okay, perfect. So butter is just soft enough now that we can break it up with our hands. So same thing that we were doing before. Hi, cooking koalas. How are you doing? Hope you had a good week. Yeah, our fellow foodies. And then once we have a sort of like sandy, crumbly looking mixture with the fat and the flours, then we can start to drizzle in our cold water and bring the dough together. But this step is really important, getting the butter and the shortening flaked up properly first. Hey, Randy. Off topic. Oh, not really. Would you mind sharing some info on the bikes we have, like brand and model? So we ride Giant Bikes. That's a Canadian company here. So the brand is Giant and that's like the male brand and then their female brand is called Liv, so L-I-V. And we both have e-bikes as well. And it is like a, definitely the higher up version is they are full suspension too. So front and back suspension because we like to hit trails and stuff. For the price point, I know it's like pretty daunting, but for us is like we ride our bikes more than we drive our car. So that's how we justified that. And then if you divide it over like X amount of years that you wanna use it, well, it should start to make you feel a bit better with the price, right? And then the other thing that we do, obviously we don't buy things full price, is we wait for the end of the season clearance. So like that's how we got my bike. Yeah, flaky, exactly, Bonkman. We don't actually wanna go to Sandy, do we? And that's also why I don't like to do this in a food processor. I think you get a different result. Yeah, you're very welcome, Randy. Let me know if you have any other questions. Oh yeah, one, one more thing on our e-bikes. So they are only pedal assist. So it's not like it just has a throttle button that you push and you don't have to bike at all, is it only helps you if you pedal. So you still have to work for it and that's why we really love those bikes is because you can switch up the settings whether you want to have like a deadly workout or not. Okay, we're almost ready for the water. Cooking koala, you had a long and tiring week. Well, glad 
Glad that it's now Friday, right? Okay, guys. We'll drizzle the water in here and then we will end up pouring this out onto the board and kneading it for the last little bit. So let me just take a peek here at the water. Six to eight tablespoons worth of very cold water because we want to keep our fat nice and cold, right? We don't want that to melt at all. So some recipes you'll even say or see that it says ice water. Start with six. We can always go up to eight tablespoons of water. Two, three, four, five, six. Kind of give that a toss around. Let the flour absorb a bit of the liquid. This is a very like fatty pastry crust. Definitely more fatty than I'm used to working with. But also the gluten-free flour might have something to do with how this is feeling. So now I always just give it like a press together and then break it back up because we're trying to distribute that water. And then again, and now it should start to come together. But I am trying to be like really gentle when I'm pressing it. And then I suppose if we notice it's still staying too dry, I might just add like a little bit more water but the more water you add the tougher your crust will get so keep that in mind it's not supposed to have like a ton of water i think that was a good idea though just that last little bit dry bits underneath. This is actually coming together really nicely for like what it is, the gluten-free crust. give that a press and then we know that we've got like a pretty nice start on our crust if we can press it out like that it is wanting to stick so we'll keep that in mind when we go to roll this out lots of flour underneath lots and lots of flour yeah gluten-free this is going to be interesting guys but I, I have a good feeling about it gonna add a touch of this actually onto the board just so we can shape it properly and then I think I'm actually gonna divide this into two 
and we'll do two smaller discs. It'll just be easier for us to roll out later on. That's nice and flowered now. Flip it over, give it a little pat. Yeah, that's gonna be so good. See how that's already looking a bit different? from when we added the flower the second time. Smooth your edges. It'll just make it easier when we go to roll this out later. Oh man, guys, we have a gluten-free pastry crust with like very nice little butter pockets. You've always wanted to make alternative lemon bars. But instead of lemon bars, you want to know if it's possible to make it with peaches or raspberries instead. Just not sure how to make it where it's got a nice crust on the bottom and a solid fruit on the top. Just like the lemon bars. Any ideas? I think something that has like a good amount of pectin in it. So like your raspberry idea would be great. You might even be able to just kind of use like the same method on the filling because the raspberry seeds have like good thickening power in there so if you blend it up and then make like a little raspberry layer and bake it with the crust i don't think it would be too watery at all yeah make a jam spread that layer on and then go from there This is how I can tell it's getting too warm in here or the crust is getting too warm is that's that also makes it want to stick to the board. Yeah, I'm quite sure cooking koala that you would be able to find like a raspberry bar recipe online. Okay. I'm grabbing some plastic wrap. We'll wrap those nice and tight. We'll label them gluten-free or celiac, whatever you wanna call it. And then those can go, I think I'm actually gonna pop them in the freezer so they can chill just a bit quicker. Yeah, making jam is not too hard for sure. A strawberry lemon bar. That sounds delicious, cooking girl. Yeah, strawberry and lemon is a great combo. Great flavor combination. A G, F. No, it's not girlfriend, it's gluten-free. Gluten-free, but not dairy-free. <laughs> Hi, Just Judo, how are you doing? Okay, dirty bowl, gone. Quick little clean up here. And then we'll go into our regular pastry crust so we don't actually have to wash our hands now. We're done the celiac stuff. Woohoo! Most of the ones in America all seem to have some kind of coffee cake topping on the raspberry bars. Huh, maybe you could just omit that. Ooh, nice, Just Judah. You made huge progress with your portfolio website. May I ask what it is for? But congrats, that's awesome. Always a good feeling like getting a big project done, right?
And yeah, things are good here, Judo. Just doing some baking for the people. And then we'll make up some lunch. Is Our fish is marinating with the miso right now. And then later on, we're going to cook up some sesame rice and grill some vegetables. Have I massaged it? Not yet. Why don't we do that once we get this other crust here? Chillin'. We'll massage the fish and then continue on with our filling. Scooter Beach sent you a great website you bookmark. Yes, yeah, your body is ready. Unreal. <laughs> Web development, cool. You did a career change from business stuff to build websites and that's your first official one. Big congrats then. Yeah, I'm so pumped for you. Firsts are always scary, right? <laughs> and before you check on the cod, you should have a drink of water. I think I might also take a quick bathroom break at that time too. Out with the coffee. In with the water. No dehydration today. <laughs> you guys take such good care of me. Thanks. You know, I'm really bad at getting carried away with what I'm doing and forgetting to hydrate. Pretty much just added that channel point option so that I could like keep myself healthy. <laughs> Okay, just going to grab some nice, cool water again. All of our fat is flaked into our flour and it's looking really good. We'll do the same thing that we just did with the gluten-free one. Thanks, Chef Babylon. Good to see you, man. You watched most of the ceremony. Love it. You're drinking less coffee these days, Greg. I think it's good for us to not drink that much coffee. Okay, so six tablespoons of water. One, two, three, four, five, six. Beauty. Oh, that's really good Greek. We were thinking of supporting this YouTube couple in Canada. They're out in Toronto. They have a chai tea business. It's called Chai Walla. And we've been thinking about supporting them and maybe buying a bag of their tea to maybe have instead of coffee some days. This, just judo, is going to actually end up being some tart shells or like a pie crust. You're on that? Yeah. And it's not that expensive either. And they also give the option of having like a dry tea versus like a wet chai with like really fresh ingredients and they do all of their blends like up in person so they have like a little commissary kitchen where they like grate all the ginger for it and all that stuff it's like what looks unreal i'm gonna dump this out guys and then start kneading our pie crust taz you don't drink coffee would you say that's like more of a like uk person thing though is having tea or is that just a super or a stupid stereotype that I just thought of. <laughs> yeah, Bonkman, isn't that the truth? It's like as good as the whole Dalgona coffee trends look, I'm glad I didn't give into it because I don't think I would have actually enjoyed it. It would have been too sweet for me. 
oh, you're just not a fan of hot drinks. So that's why I didn't drink coffee for a long, long time as well, Chef Babylon, is because I absolutely hate burning my tongue and my mouth, like anything. Just avoid hot beverages. In the UK, most office working types binge coffee. Well, that's fair. Okay, it's looking like we need way more water compared to the gluten-free crust. Just break this up a bit more first and then we'll do maybe one tablespoon to start of extra water. But this is also showing us the difference in the flowers of wheat versus no wheat. And I'm very interested to see how they will bake up. Some good comparisons made today on stream. You think you found them, Chaiwala? It's Eamon and Beck. Yeah, that's the couple that does van conversions as well. Yeah, look at that, super crumbly. Send help. Crumble bumble. Hopefully that will saturate the rest of our flour. I think it will. It's like kind of building like a sand castle almost. It's like build it up, break it down. And then like I say, it's never a good thing to just like keep adding water kind of like I'm doing, but I've made a lot of pie crusts and this is definitely not coming together yet. Just be careful, because the more water, well, it might go tough. And like most of the dry bits are always on the bottom, right? So let's just kind of press that. Bring in our dough scraper as well. This guy is really handy. Kind of just mush it together. Smush and mush. I'm thinking still a bit more. So that would have been the full eight tablespoons because I did one and a half of the water. I'll do the last half here. Just those little like crumbly bits here on the bottom. Doesn't want to knead in. <laughs> There's only so much flour the butter will absorb. <laughs> there we go. Come together right now over me. Greek, your wife makes the chai tea from scratch, pounding everything in a mortar pestle. Um, that sounds amazing. Can I please come over for a cup of tea? <laughs> All right, guys, going to the mainland. Gotta go taste this lovely tea that Greek's wife is making. Okay, now that this is coming together, let's divide it in half now. And then we'll do our two discs again. Sherry WV, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome in. Mm, this one is sticking a bit too. Once again, when the dough starts to stick, that's how you know it's getting too warm. Gotta get this into the fridge. 
Enough messing around. I always find though, when I cook for someone with allergies, I it takes me just a bit longer to do all of the processes because I'm trying to be like really careful. <laughs> Cooking koalas. Hilarious. Turned out good though, I have to say. Just got such a nice breeze in through the window. I'll take more of those. More breezes, please. One. This is the non-gluten-free stuff. Yeah, exactly, Greek. This is our regular crust. So that can also go away. I did actually pop those into the freezer. Okay, so our water container can go. And then when we go to roll out the crust, I will roll out the gluten-free one on a separate cutting board. And that way, no cross-contamination. Okay guys, just washing up my hands. And then it's strawberry time. Is that a wild hoju? Hello, how are you dealing with cooking with the extra weight on your left ring finger? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a burden. Been doing some weight training with my, my left hand. <laughs> I was actually saying hoju that the only difference of me being married now is I just have an extra piece of jewelry I have to worry about not losing. <laughs> That's it. That's the only difference. Just a bit more stress in my life. <laughs> okay, before we switch directions, first things first, give a little massage onto our black cod been marinating with miso uh, mirin. So miso mirin sugar. Three ingredients, super simple. We'll cook that up later for lunchy. Okay, like I said, quick bathroom break. I'll come back and hydrate and we'll carry on.
We are back. Okay, I'm catching up now. <laughs> View, and I just saw your reminder. Thank you. Oh, that was actually really good. Thanks, guys. Cheers. The ring nurse trick. Okay, I need to hear this. Pin it to your scrub too. That way you keep it and it keeps some weirdos away when they realize you're married. Yes, yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay. So rhubarb has been chopped. We still have to do the strawberries. I'm gonna do that on a separate board now because we have kind of gluten, we have glutified our wooden one. But I'm not keeping the filling separate. I thought that would be smart. So we washed up our berries earlier. We're aiming for about four cups worth when they're all chopped up. So let's start by taking the tops off. Finding strawberries in your area has been tough. Yours are not quite ready yet. Yeah, ours are like just starting to ripen, but there's not very many like ripe all at once. But these are looking amazing. I did wash up a few extras just so I can like try one too. Because like the recipe said, I mean, your amount of sugar going in with the fruit is gonna depend on how sweet the fruit is. Mmm. That's like in your face strawberry flavor. I've not had a strawberry like that in months. Mmm. Wow. I think I seen Keanu Reeves staring at those berries in the Matrix. I'm actually shocked that I have not started growing blueberries. Maybe because I would never have enough. Yeah, do you want the blueberry or the strawberry? Honestly, Hoju, I would choose blueberry. I would choose blueberry over strawberry. Are you shocked right now, guys? Yeah, I eat blueberries like five times a week in my smoothies or in salmon ice smoothies for breakfast. Not like a lot of them, but still have blueberries five times a week. They're really good. They have like all, all the good antioxidants for you. Okay, that's going in the compost. It can go away. These don't even look real. Okay, get our bowl back beside us as well. And I think I'm gonna switch, actually no, I'll keep the paring knife. So now let's do half and then I think I'm gonna cut in to six. So you have nice little wedges like that. So half and then diagonal, diagonal. Obviously the really big berries, maybe we'll do eight like this one. So just looking for the same thing we did with the rhubarb. So just nice, delicate pieces of fruit. So you're not trying to bite through this massive chunk of strawberry or rhubarb and then the entire tart falls apart. Okay, 
You have four blueberry bushes. They're eight years old now. Unreal, your second time planting them, different homes. So you just like dug them out of the ground and brought them with you? I love that. This is the dedication that we need. I think that might be me in a few years then, cook and grill. Yeah, we can't leave our blueberries behind. <laughs> uh, elevation, maybe a hundred feet above sea level. As far as meters, maybe 20 meters above sea level. Your pear tree is loaded, figs are on, but this year your apple tree isn't loaded. Yeah, like, okay, so we got our apple tree pruned the other year back, but it just completely did not come back from that. So we had to cut it down this year. There's also in a really bad part in our yard where there wasn't much sun. So definitely the people who landscaped this originally didn't really know what they were planting. Oh yeah, I know that we for sure can grow a lot of things here cooking koalas. Like even stuff, this is crazy to think, but stuff like pineapples and kiwi grows wild here. So maybe it will make more sense when I say that we live in the rainforest of Canada, right? Okay, these are getting bigger, so I'm going to switch to my chef's knife and I'm actually going to cut it in half all of these big ones and then switch back to the paring knife. <laughs> Thanks, Slimgo. Yeah. yeah, our backyard is just a jungle this year. I really, really love it. It's pretty serene with all the birds, the birds and the bees. Let's put this half into the bowl with the rhubarb. Oh, wow, scooter beads. Yeah, definitely up there, hey? I have to say our grapes are doing really good this year already. Our Concord grapes. I did a good, you guys saw me the other day when we did the pruning together. I did a little bit more the other day. Arizona is like almost too hot to grow stuff, right? Or at least that's what I've heard. But yeah, maybe stuff like citrus trees. That's also another one I want to do for myself is like, if I can grow a lemon tree and an orange tree, I would be so pumped. That's a challenge for myself. We made it, we made it. This looks so good. The fruit is definitely one of my favorite parts of summer. And that is also when you know I am someone that lives to eat. It's like when you look forward to the seasons just because of what you can eat during them. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love that. In Texas, you have the best peaches right now. Oh, cool. I think, is Texas a spot where you can grow a lot of different things as well? Your grapes get a white fly disease on the leaves every year. I have not heard of that, and I'm just gonna knock on wood, because I don't even know what that is, but I'm sad, sad for your grapes, cooking girl. So hard to find Bonkman. There are people here that are like huge into propagating. And there is a local girl that has like a really nice, the lemon tree is about like this high now and she's selling them for like 10 bucks each. Okay, sugar for our fruit. So we doubled the recipe. 
So for every four cups of fruit, we need half a cup of sugar, but because we have rhubarb, a very sour slash acidic kind of fruit, I'm gonna up it to the three quarter cup mark. So let's do like one and a half cups of sugar in here. I know that sounds crazy. Hi Dust, good to see you man. How are you doing? As well as Papa. Oh, Papa Reagan. Hi, Papa Reagan. Welcome in, guys. This is the partner to Mama Reagan. Thank you so much for all of the well wishes. Love you guys. Are you doing better, Papa? I saw that you weren't feeling too good the other day. Okay, first half cup of sugar. Okay, there's one cup. Maybe we won't go like complete one and a half. I think that's enough. Are you guys feeling me? Like that's quite a bit. Let's get a spoon and see how it mixes in. Bonkman, you wanted the best of both worlds. Lemons for lemonade, zest, juice, garnish, and limes for juice, zest, garnish for drinks. Exactly, yeah. Those are the two citrus I mostly buy. I enjoy oranges for sure, but it's not really a fruit that I always need to have. I think that was a good call on the sugar, guys, because this is completely coated already. I'm gonna add a touch of vanilla into here as well, and then I'll grab one lemon out. Wash this up real quick. That's good to hear, Dust. Glad you are well, dude. Your first house had a tangerine tree before you moved. Get like four to 14 on a branch. Juice them and sell a gallon of tangerine juice for 20 bucks. You're living the life. That's so awesome. Yeah, mama, mama is there staying silent for once. We'll tell her that we say hi. Give her a hug for us. That is really interesting, Bonkman. So you won't eat oranges, but you like all of the flavored things. And you like orange juice. Okay, let's zest this up. I actually like doing it this way. A weird way of zesting that was so foreign to me when my old chef told me to do it this way. He's like, do it upside down so you can like see what you're zesting, right? And back then I was just like, what even is this? But now, absolutely love it. Holy, really juicy. Think about like giving the lemon kind of like a little shave almost. It's really all it is. The little bit of a uh, flavor from the lemon zest will go really good with the cream cheese drizzle afterwards too. Okay, give that a tap. All of that zest out. The brand Simply. Oh yeah, like Simply Orange and all those ones. The apple juice is really good, you're saying? Rhubarb cake with vanilla pudding made with the milk and rhubarb juice mix yeast dough and crumbles on top. Oh, sounds really good. Yeah, a hug, that's impossible. We're social distancing, good one, Papa. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put the juice here just into a little container so that we can mix the cornstarch in too. So 
So one lemon juice. Yeah, I really like zesting that way, Bonkman, now that I got a hang for it. But at first, that was such a weird way to zest for me. Simply watermelon they make. I cannot say that I've seen that here. That is madness. Yeah, dust. Aw, I miss hugs. Yeah, man. Okay, there we go. So I decided not to double the amount of lemon juice because the rhubarb is really sour. Thought that made sense, but we will double the amount of cornstarch for thickening, right? Because we doubled the amount of fruit. So we'll need about half a cup of cornstarch. That's quite a bit. <laughs> but if you guys have ever cooked fruit down or made like fruit pies, you know that a lot of water comes out when it starts to get heated up. Okay, and then after this, we should be able to check on our crusts that are resting up in the freezer and hopefully start rolling those out, putting them into the tart shells, get a par bake on that, and then start rolling into lunch. A late lunch of sorts. I mean, probably closer to dinner for some of you guys with the time zones. That looks good to me. <laughs> yeah, Bonkman. You want to carry a watermelon to the host's house? Hey, do you have a juicer? <laughs> I'm here to make some mixed drinks. You infuse vodka with rhubarb. Let it set for a week and then have little sips. I also really enjoy infusing alcohols with fruit. Okay, so we have a little lemon juice cornstarch slurry here. Should mix up pretty smooth, I think. And it's always recommended that you mix cornstarch with a cold liquid first because it activates really quickly once it heats up. And we just wanna minimize any risk of having lumps. That's really thick. But it's still better than adding water into it, right? Yeah, it will seize up. Just making sure there's no more lumps before we mix that with the fruit. Like already, look how much liquid is coming out of there. So that's why we have as much cornstarch as we do. Last little thing to add is just some vanilla bean paste and there's not very much left in the bottle. The line's like down here. So coming up, this will probably be a bit goal. <laughs> vanilla bean paste replenishment. And then you guys will get to watch me use it for the next like five years. <laughs> so a tablespoon of vanilla into there. You just found it a year ago. It's so much better, hey, than the like really liquid vanilla extracts. Okay, there's that. One more mix. 
on our cornstarch and lemon juice. And that will get poured in. And then we'll just stir that up and we can set it aside. It doesn't have to be cold or anything like that. The paste is pricey, but like I said, it will last you like five years and many, many baked goods. Sure, we mix in the lemon zest nice and evenly as well. Okay, friends. Back to the crests. It's cheaper if you have an Asian market. I've never seen vanilla bean paste at the Asian market here, but that is actually good to know. Yeah, I believe we ordered that one off of Amazon. Nielsen Massey is the brand. Nielsen Massey. Okay. Cutting board for rolling out tart shells. We're gonna start with six gluten-free. And we're gonna be using some baking beans today. Really nothing special at all. I just have some kidney beans and I just call them baking beans because they're basically like a weight that you use when you're doing a par-baked pastry crust and then we can reuse them. So they've been baked many, many times. I don't know how that affects the cooking process. So I always just keep the same beans to reuse for baking. Doesn't have to be kidney beans either, guys. So I'll keep those aside as well. Oh yeah, that rested up perfectly. First things first. Just gonna label this other crust as well if I don't end up using it. rolling pin and then I'm gonna turn on the oven stay there it's not gonna stay is it <laughs> stay turn on the oven for par baking the crust I actually bake this dough at 400 Fahrenheit roll out the dough to 1 8 of an inch thick so pretty thin there Line prepared tart shells with the dough pressing into the bottom using a rolling pin to cut off the edges. And then blind bake with beans for 15 to 20 until they're just golden brown. So my oven bakes pretty hot and I know because this is a really buttery crust, it could potentially like brown quickly. So I'm gonna go just a bit under 400 so i'm gonna do 375 fahrenheit and that's just because i know my oven bakes hot and things that have butter in the past i've had some not so good experiences this is actually pretty hard still gotta let it cool or gotta let it warm up just for a bit but let's take a look at our list. So we are actually halfway through already. So we've marinated the fish. We made both a gluten-free crust and a regular crust. We've made the filling for the tarts. And now we are rolling and par baking before we fill with the fruit and finish them off. Our next thing that I will pull out 
is the cream cheese. So I'm gonna let it warm up a little bit. And then later on, we will make a semi-sweet cream cheese drizzle. Semi-sweet. So excited for this. Okay, I'm gonna wash up my rolling pin as well. No more contamination. Get a little bit of soap on the cloth. this clean cloth and we'll dry that off and then we'll get some flour on the board because we don't want any sticking I think we are set up friends yeah so far I am loving this little flour blend Wait, I'm doing your dishes too, Titan? Can definitely feel the rice flour in the mixture. It's just like a little bit gritty, obviously compared to a wheat flour. another really interesting little tool that was handed down to me so don't be weird guys but this is called a tart tamper so if we take our tart shell obviously we have a mini one and a big one is once you put the round shell in there you just press this in so easy this is from my grandma I don't know if like my grandpa made it or what but it is so handy so like a mini tart done Regular tart, done. Works well with muffin tins and everything. Can't eat onions, hugs to you as well. Yeah, we'll, we'll allow you here, even though we love to eat onions. Thank you for the follow. It's really handy. A little bit phallic, but <laughs> it's really handy. <laughs> Okay, I'll do the dishes and you'll take some fishing this evening. That's a good trade if he ends up bringing something home. I think we got something blowing in here. Okay, let's see. Can we start? No, it's still too cold. I know what we're gonna do. I mean, for me, it's as simple as just setting this aside. We'll do our veggie prep while we're waiting because we don't like wasting time. Broccoli and collie. And this is also why we always start working on our desserts earlier in the day. Because sometimes you do have like little slowdowns like this. Like, oh, my crust got a little bit too firm. Now we have to wait. Well, we don't just want to be like standing there doing nothing. Smoked trout on the green egg. That would be so lovely. 
Okay, you guys remember our purple cauliflower from what? Two weeks back already? <laughs> we'll trim this up, then we'll grill it along with these beautiful little broccolis. And that's our healthy stuff for today. Oh, nice, you grew purple cauliflower. See, I can't grow those like bigger vegetables because they just take up too much room in our yard. Grilled veggies really are a treat. And even for people that like don't love veggies is grilled broccoli is so good. Now on to purple potatoes and next purple snow peas seeds. Do you love purple as much as I do, cooking girl? I feel like we are one in the same. Okay, that's all the leaves. I always just take the leaves off because they kind of burn when we put them on the grill. So I don't find a use for them. And then we're not gonna trim off a lot of the stem because right now we're kind of doing it in an elimination diet with Doggo as she's been still having allergy things. So no snacks even right now. So sad to say Doggo can't help us there. Kind of sounds like it's raining outside. I don't think it is. Yeah, it matches my knife like almost perfectly. <laughs> yeah, it's my favorite color too, cooking girl. Okay, here's our other thing that you can learn. Can't eat onions. This is what we learned last time we processed the other half of this is the color comes from it being crossbred with beets. Yeah, poor doggo. So right now she only gets lamb. is the people at the pet store said, maybe try even eliminating like vegetables and just see if that helps. I'm gonna just break this apart into bigger florets first and then I'll trim it up. The couple spots that are a bit discolored. Something to be said about eating the rainbow, right guys? Okay, so we'll do this for like a few minutes and then I'll go see how our crust is feeling, if it's soft enough for us to roll out and then we'll go do that. I'm interested to see how the purple looks when it's been grilled. Whether it looks like weird or what. What does it taste like? Can you taste the beets in it? No, it's actually more mild. I mean, in my opinion, than a regular white cauliflower. It has a milder flavor even. Which you think that it would actually be stronger. But that's what I thought last time that I was eating it. I rated you guys before. I think we did. We might have. I'm sorry if I cannot recall. <laughs> okay, let's get back into it. So I'm going to keep, like I said, as much stem on here as possible. And as far as grilling, so we're gonna be using a grill pan. So a large cast iron grill pan. So you don't really have to worry about the, 
vegetables falling through grill grates, like into the burner elements, whatever you're grilling on. But we do want the size of the vegetable to like still be pretty easy to eat. So something like this, where we can get some color on it, but it will still stay a little bit crunchy and not go like super soft and soggy and mushy on us, right? Because that's when we all start to hate vegetables is when they have absolutely no texture left. So just try and cut everything around the same size like this. And I always like to have like one flat side on the stem to like put on the grill first and then flip it after that. And I'm just gonna grab a bowl to put that stuff in. Something's blowing in guys. Your purple potatoes kept their color. You were surprised. You can't wait to make purple potato chips. Yeah. yeah I think they even like kind of keep their color when you fry them or bake them up like chips. Let's do that. Hi, King Russell the Great. Yeah. Just call me Cauliflower Kate. And then this size that we're cutting, these veggies should be cooked within like five to seven minutes of them being put on the grill. So it should be a nice quick cooking time. Oh, there's the butcher shop guys. Just gonna quickly mute, get my order number in total. Hang tight. We're good. $29 for our eye of round. Something just banged outside. I wanna make sure it's okay. Okay, just something that fell over before. Just messaging Sam the order number. We got the beef boys. Yeah, is this a coincidence right now, King Russell? Yes, it is actually. Well, kind of planned, I guess, because I love purple things, right? So yeah, it's always a good day when your knife matches what you're eating. <laughs> Yeah, I smell a conspiracy theory. What, is, what exactly is going on here on Cook with Kate? Okay, there is that. Let's get into our broccoli. Oh, nice, Greek. You saved up your 50K channel points. Unless you want to keep saving and redeem it for a Cook with Sammy. Okay, same thing with broccoli. I think we'll go with bigger knife to start. Just gonna give a poke to our pie crust. Almost. Almost time to roll it out. Yeah, it's a hard decision. Oh, 
Yeah, that should grill up pretty good. And we'll probably have to grill this in two different batches as well on the grill pan. Like it's a pretty big pan, but I don't think we'll get the broccoli and cauliflower on together. And then this is where I can tell you guys that, well, you can either serve the vegetables like hot, warm, lukewarm, or even cold. So that's the thing is grilled vegetables are good, like however you serve them. And because we're serving it with a ginger scallion kind of sauce, I think it would be good kind of like semi warmed instead of being really hot off the grill. Hot off the grill. You're gonna stew about it. Perfect Greek. Yeah, you got time, that's the thing. It's just cause you have the points available. Doesn't mean you just have to try and think of something super quick. There we go. Okay, veggie prep is done for later. That feels good. Now it's tart time. Someone redeemed cook with Sam already? Yes, we're doing one tomorrow for our Anisopteryx. I think I'm actually gonna use this. So our first cook with Sammy is gonna be redeemed tomorrow on stream and he has requested that Sam make some sort of lamb. So Sam is doing a coffee crusted lamb with mango chutney. And this is a dish that he's made for me before and it is unreal. The kid knows how to cook lamb, that's for sure. Your hype, yeah. So Sam's gonna do the lamb and the chutney. And then I was like, do you need me to still do the veggies for you? He's like, yeah. <laughs> and we're actually cooking for another new family tomorrow as well. So like our three families that we typically cook for, they weren't interested in the lamb this week, but they had a friend that was like, I want some lamb. So we're cooking for a new fam, guys. Man, that is still super cold. That's worrying me. So I'm gonna take out the rest of these crusts that are in here and let them start to warm up. Otherwise, we're never gonna get anywhere with this. Maybe I should have known that though, because this crust recipe did have a higher amount of fat, which when you chill it, it gets really hard, right? But I know that once we start kind of working with it, it will warm up quickly. Just be gentle. Can also use like a little bit of warmth from our hands. Did we toss the veggies in an oil to coat? Not yet, but I will be. Yeah, for sure before we grill. I just know we have a little bit of time. So I didn't wanna get the oil on there yet. Hey, that actually really worked. It's just like pressing down. Cause look at the bottom. We want that to form back together, guys. And the thickness we're going for, about an eighth of an inch. You guys like see all of the butter pockets in here? 
I mean, so far, for a gluten-free pastry crust, this is working not too shabby at all. I am loving this. Actually, the marble rolling pin is helping this situation because the little bit of weight is helping to roll it. Just needed a bit more flour. I know we have that crack there in the center, but I think we're okay. We'll just try and avoid that when we cut out our rounds. Give it a little spin to make sure it's not sticking. Yeah, lots, lots of butter tarts. Maybe gluten-free, but it's definitely not dairy-free. I'm not sure, can you do a dairy-free pie crust? I'm not sure how it works if you do just shortening. Probably not nearly the same flavor, right? Because there's a ton of flavor in butter. Still no sticking. Nice and even. Just want to make sure it didn't stick. Okay, so that is what we need to fill. I'm thinking that this little ring mold right here might be almost perfect. Got to go a bit bigger so it can go inside. That one was not perfect. Use margarine, oh, I can't hate you for saying that buff because that's actually a great recommendation. Also, hope you are well, dude. Maybe that one. I guess we won't know until we try. It's either that one or that one, but I think that's gonna be way too big. I haven't. I don't think I've even like knowingly ingested margarine in so long. I think that'll work. I guess we'll just have to try our first one and see how it goes. There we go. Flip over our little tart pan. Bring in this. Let's see how our tart tamper works with this. Cause if we don't have to fool around, well that's okay. Can we just push it down, being like really delicate? I'm actually okay with that, I think. I don't mind just the little like squiggle, I guess. And I was actually thinking that these would not have the edge. So it was almost more like a butter tart crust. That's pretty good. The only thing is, guys, what do you think? Is that going to shrink too much when we bake it? Might actually be a touch too thick still. Here. These are only things we'll find out once we start working with the pastry. So if you find that the pastry wants to kind of crack when you're trying to put it into the shell, just go a bit thinner. I 
I can see now that this center was a bit thick. Okay, little roll on this guy. It'll firm up and just shrink a little bit. That's what I think too, Bonkman. I actually love when it goes kind of like scalloped like that. Kind of gives me like a grandma vibe. So I'm not even gonna fool around with that. Just let it do its thing. Should be able to get all six of our doughs from this amount. Yeah, exactly. I've already been thinking about that too, is like the juices that get baked into the bottom of these. I'm going to try this other mold just to see how it fills the shell. Because we never know if we don't try. I might actually like it better, I think. Yeah. Okay. Larger one is where it's at. beauty it just gives us a little bit more dough oh that was definitely the wrong one get the green one out of here kate that's not what we're using we only have two more to fill so we're okay one two And then we should be able to reuse this dough. So my plan was to kind of just roll it back into the regular pastry crust that we made and reuse it that way. And then we don't have to waste anything. Hi, Eric, good to see you. Yeah, newlyweds. So good. So good. Now that it's softening up, ah, it's starting to tear a bit. Guys, this is why I don't think I could like have a bakery is because it's actually really stressful. Like there's all these things that you always have to think of. And a lot of the times, like your day is dependent on the weather not quite the same as cooking, right? Oh, I just got home from work and I have hair all over my face. <laughs> Welcome in Jiggles. How was work today? Okay, we did it, guys. So now, what I am going to do to help the shell from puffing up in the center, let's do three fork pricks. 
in the bottom and then that will let the air release instead of it making a pocket and then pushing up all the filling out of the tart. Definitely don't want that to happen. Sammy is sadly not jamming out with his jammies on right now, Buff. He's actually working. He's painting. So fill this up two thirds with our baking beans. And then we're gonna bake these until they are nice golden brown. And then the weight of the beans will also keep the bottom down. So it should definitely not puff up on us now. The Sahara dust was blowing in crazy. Okay guys, this is going in. I'm gonna set, oh, I think seven minute timer. And now I can finally kind of relax and not worry as much about the celiac now that those are done. The only thing we have to do is fill them and then bake them again. So get into our regular crust now because we have 18, 18 tins to fill. That is regular crust. We can use regular flour. Just gonna go get a scoop from the bag. Well, since the gluten-free crust rolled out so nicely, got a good feeling about this regular one. Like I, probably wouldn't have been able to tell that was gluten-free, like if I didn't know working with the dough, so that's good. Just rub flour all over it. I think we'll actually start with the flatter side down. Almost forgot to set that timer. Actually gonna do seven minutes. There's a tarish coating you spray on building envelopes that make it waterproof. Wait, what? Yeah, look how nice that's rolling out. Gotta love wheat. There's like, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's like butter swirls almost in there. <laughs> and then what do we feel? I think I just want to like kind of press this into the top. This is our gluten-free layer. It is getting soft, so I want to kind of work with this quickly. bit more flour. No sticking. That's what I didn't want to happen. <laughs> no one will ever know. There we go. Now we're set. It's still trying to stick, wow. <laughs> it's like, I will never be 
what flower was, what oh, flower is. Yeah. Thanks so much, Jiggles. Oh, you guys are still talking about the wedding. <laughs> Thanks, friends. I mean, every time you remind me of that day, it's always gonna make me happy, right? It will never get old until it gets old for you guys. I'm gonna flip this over. Let's put that on the bottom. I don't wanna see it. I'm hoping that if I don't see it, it behaves a bit better. Two months already jiggles, wow. I actually felt like a bit longer than that. Had lots of good resubs today though, so thanks guys. Some long terms, some short terms. Okay, I'm gonna try and flip this over again. I don't like the crumbles here. Aw, Bonkman's going to worky. I guess it is that time, yep. Yeah. 2 p.m. for me, Bonkman's gone. Well, Bonkman, if you're still here, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I know I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, so we're going to one eighth of an inch thick. Now we got this going. Starting to get warm in here now that we got the oven on. I'm definitely feeling it. Before we go any further. Yeah, I knew it. I was like, I should probably give this a wiggle. We're good. This is gonna roll out to be like the entire size of the cutting board. These little flowery pieces are leaving pock marks. If I zoom this out, you guys maybe see it all. Bonkman's going away. Poof. Yeah, literally the entire cutting board. I ain't even mad. Yeah, the nice thing about the marble rolling pin is that the weight kind of does the work for you. Like the weight of the marble is I really just have to hold on to the handles. I don't have to put any pressure on this at all. Okay, guys, I think we're good. Yeah, that's feeling really nice. Okay, we got our big our big one and we only need six of the bigger ones and then we'll use that green one what I threw it in the sink because I got upset <laughs> we'll use the green one for the smaller ones sounds perfect GF tarts they need two minutes two minute timer and then they might be done Okay, so six of these. 
one, two, three, four, five, I guess I'll go up to there, six, and then we'll do the rest with these. Have I ever made kulebiak? Yes! Kulebiaka? I actually have made that, Sean. Is, yeah, one of my long-term viewers. He actually requested me to make that. It's the Russian fish dish that's like wrapped in pastry. It's actually really lovely. <laughs> yeah, dust my, my Insta story. We got the salt in today, man. No shortage. You're gonna be like mind blown when I say to you that that entire case of salt cost $150. But at least we know now that we're not gonna go without because the guy at the store told us that the price was gonna go up really soon. So he's like, if you guys always use this, you should probably order some. Nike! My dude! Two more months and it's two years together. He says, I'm glad my energy and vibes take me where I'm needed. And I've been listening more and more to the universe. And by cutting away a lot of things, I realize who I am and what I'm in for. Love you guys. Cheers and smoke weed every day. Love you, man. Thank you so much for all of the wonderful times together much appreciated. I hope you are doing good, you and the waifu. Always love having you around, you know that. Okay. Okay, my timer is about to go off, so I'm just gonna wash up my hands. This is where we think about cross-contamination again, because we're doing gluten-free crust in the oven. We're working with wheat on the cutting board. Wash, wash, wash. Really, really good. You guys are doing good, that's good. You're, oh yeah, you're looking for a new place. Yeah, pretty much the price on everything is going up. I think you nailed it by saying that, Jiggles. Oh, not, not quite golden brown. So I think even still a bit longer, but look at how the pastry like puffed up. I am really loving it. And it was a good call that we did extra pastry because look at how small those ones ended up being. The beans are like, kind of baking into here though. I've never had that happen before. And that will be interesting. So another two minutes, I think. Have you ever had the beans bake into the crust? Jiggles is your nickname for your wife. <laughs> Making sure I have the right tin. Maybe I'll do a quick chill once we fill all of the tart shells with the pastry. Maybe we'll just quickly pop it in the fridge so that they can chill up and then the beans won't bake into it.
There's always a lot of things to think about when you're baking, right? You're tier two, Nike? Oh, it says tier one on my thing. I wonder why it's saying that. Okay, that should be it for those gluten-free crusts. looking pretty perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let those cool off. Pop our handy dandy trivet underneath and then just tap the beans out. There's no sense of trying to fool around with them while they're still rocking hot. That will just have some injuries it ensue. <laughs> no injuries please. Okay, so that was the six larger ones, and now we're gonna fill our smaller ones. We can also start to gather up our pastry again. I typically don't like to re-roll it after we cut out from it, but maybe if it's only a couple, I might. Okay, so these tart shells are just a bit like deeper than the last ones. Should be like a nice little two biter or three biter. If you're Sam, two bites. If you're Kate, probably three bites. A lot of tarts, yeah, dude. Well, I'm selling a dozen today. So six regular and six gluten-free ones for Charmaine. And then probably gonna sell six tomorrow to the people that ordered the lamb. I don't know if I'll use this uh, crust recipe again. I wanted to try it just to see if I liked it like better than the last one I really enjoyed using. And I don't think I like this one as much as the other one. Although it does look super like flaky. So I guess we'll see once the fruit is baked in. Yeah, Sammy's really hungry. But well, we're gonna have six for ourselves. I can't deprive myself of this or Sam. <laughs> oh man, did I get enough? Literally one, one short of having enough 
rounds cut out. That's hilarious. Gotta love when that happens. Three more, guys. This one's a little bit delicate. Yeah, we're doing some production cooking today. Cooking for the people. It's my favorite Friday thing. What you eating today, Nike? You got some tasty foods planned or what? Oh, holding it too far. Okay, our last one. So I'm just gonna pile up some of these like pretty nicely or as nice as I can. And then just try and get one more rolled out. We don't wanna crumple it back together because then that's gonna overwork the pastry. So my plan here if this will not stick. <laughs> Can we roll this back together? Maybe not. What if we flip it? Then I think. Didn't take much effort. There we go. So don't want it to stick. It's a wise choice of me picking that back up. Just kind of give it a little rub around in that flower. Woohoo! We did it, guys. Holy, 24 tarts. Now you can see why stuff like this is actually like a little bit expensive from the bakery is because there's actually quite a bit of work and labor that goes into it. Like, check that out. Very, very nice. Okay, I'm now have extra gluten-free crust and regular crust. So that can just go into the freezer. Now you guys can think of some other tarts or something to make. Just gonna clear off the board. Never a bad thing to have extra crust kicking around. Wash it up. Give you guys that view. Okay, now all of the hard things are complete. 
Holy smokes. I told you guys there would be a lot of dessert prep. And the rest of this stuff is quite simple. <laughs> the curse of Kate Nike, dying from hunger. I'm sorry, man. There's that. If you don't get flour everywhere, were you even baking? These are the questions we have to ask ourselves. Beauty. I, so, <laughs> this apron though, this is why we wear aprons. <laughs> Always so tidy until you look at her apron. I can't really work in a dirty environment. Like I feel like it's super distracting to me. So that's why I always have to clean up before I go into the next process. And that's just something that's been like ingrained into my brain over the last nine years as well is because you never really have like in an industrial kitchen or like in a restaurant kitchen i'm not gonna have this much space to work in all the time i get like you get your one space for a cutting board that's like this size and maybe like a foot beside you that is your working area so like if your area is messy you're not gonna get anything done so yeah, being used to working in a small space has made me very efficient in the bigger space. And yeah, then you don't have to spend like a ton of time afterwards, like cleaning everything up either. Just seems easier. Yeah, how does it feel, Mrs. Om Dog? <laughs> Do I sell the coffee mugs dust? Yeah. Yeah, they're on my merch store. The link is on my channel page. And I think I also have the merch link here too. There it is. So not the largest coffee mug, but I actually love the way like that the print came out on it. It's super nice and clear. And I would love to eventually add the mug that's like black. And then when you fill it with hot beverage, it goes to like the white and the logo. Super cool. And yeah, I have to order a bunch of stickers too still. All right. Let's take a peek here. So these are our celiac crusts where we use baking beans to help weigh down the crust. And then that way it wouldn't like puff up and push all the filling out. But it looked like as these were baking, like the beans kind of baked into the crust a bit. You know what I mean? So I'm just gonna try and like tap them out if I can. And this is also why we did the gluten-free crust first, right? Uh, other thing that we'll do first before we put beans in those, is we'll do our little pox, our pock pock marks. And that will also help the crust from puffing up too much. So just putting little air pockets for the steam to escape as it bakes. And we won't get bubbles. Just these little things that will help us in the end. Okay, let's keep going here. This feels pretty delicate too. I don't love how that happened. What do you think guys? Should we even fool around with the beans for these? This is kind of a waste of time in my mind. Hmm. 
At least we know the crust stays together. I think I want to bake them without the beans. I'm going to go for it. Because if I have to fool around with grabbing beans out of 18 shells, that's going to take a lot longer than these six. Get out. Now it's just a mess. Okay, we're going in. And then while those bake, we can deal. That was bad. I was worried that the parchment would like break up the crust though. Okay, let's do a five minute timer just in case anything crazily goes wrong here. Yeah, the, this recipe is so delicate that I thought that the parchment, like even just the structure of the paper would bung up the dough. So this is always a learning experience. What? Scott! Redeeming some Cook with Kate merch! Look at this, guys! A Cook with Kate sticker! Is that for your Yeti mug too, Scott? Thank you! So even though that the beans like baked into the shell, it still kept its structure. which is great to see. So even with like our little mishap, at least we end up with a nice crust for the tart. Something to hold all of that tasty strawberry rhubarb filling. RTIC cooler, nice. Well, thank you so much, Scott. I'm pumped. Feel free to like share a photo wherever you end up putting your sticker if you want in Discord or something. Yeah, Judo, what, what do the beans have to do with the strawberry rhubarb tart? Don't worry guys, it's not, the beans aren't being cooked into the dessert. They were just being used to hold down the shell, but it didn't really work that good. So we're gonna see how they bake up without having any beans in them. Hopefully it's easier. Cause we like simple, like easy processes. You don't wanna be fooling around with stuff like this all the time. But I would rather like make this mistake myself than you guys doing it at home and not really knowing like where to go from here, right? So it's like, let me do the hard stuff and then we'll figure out how to do it easier the second time. Yeah, is that canned kidney beans? That's hilarious. Yeah, people probably came in, well, this is not a strawberry rhubarb tart that I've ever seen. <laughs> this one's being kind of a pain, but that is okay. Okay, good news is we can finally fill this up and then bake them again. 
We made it. Okay, so filling was made earlier. We got strawberries, rhubarb, vanilla, lemon juice and zest, and cornstarch, as well as some sugar in here. So it's looking watery, but that's what we need. So we need like a good scoop of everything to fill this up. The cornstarch is gonna thicken that liquid as it bakes. like a little top in like that and I think we're good That's the timer for our other crusts. That should be the halfway point here for baking or around there. Hmm, let's see. So this is how these are baking. See how the center is like just slightly puffing up? I think I'll go back over with a fork one more time. Thank you very much, Cookie, for the thousand biddies. Yeah, happy Friday, biddies. <laughs> Awesome. I'm just gonna do stove view for now while we do a couple more pokes through these and then we'll put them back in. So we can tell now that this pastry recipe definitely like puffy and flaky, right? Oh, well, that side kind of fell. That will be a cake tart. Do another five. I'm liking that little increment there. That's looking good. Okay, we needed a bit more in here. Depending on how much filling we have left over, maybe we'll end up rolling out that extra crust tomorrow and make like a little pie or something. Strawberry rhubarb pie. Oh, hi, Annie. Look at you, you have a different name color now. <laughs> I was like so used to your yellow. How are you doing? Oh, you had your colonoscopy this morning and did you get the results yet or now you gotta wait? Yeah, we loaded these tarts up real nice. Mostly good news. Well, that's good to hear. Okay, guys, this is actually great timing, Annie, is we did our first rendition of a gluten-free strawberry rhubarb tart. So we used this gluten-free flour blend in place of all-purpose flour in the recipe, and so far, so good. So these are going back into the oven. About 20 minutes. Return to the oven, bake until the fruit looks thickened and jammy. 20 to 25. That we can do. Four small polyps you had on the ascending side that are considered high risk. Oh no. And now you got an, another biopsy. 
Okay, I'm also gonna separate how these are on the pan. And then I'll just do like a 10 minute timer. Okay, I'm gonna take very quick bathroom break. I'll be right back, guys. back okay let's check on those other crusts that we got we have like a minute left so they are puffy but it looks like as they cool they kind of go back into the shell and give us enough room to fill it properly so that's good So it's likely that Annie will have to consider his gluten-free diet. The fact that your surgery last year looked clean is very good news though. Well, that is good for sure. I am happy to hear that. Yeah, there's nothing like reoccurring, right? That makes sense. Okay, 10 seconds here and then I will set eight minutes for the gluten-free ones that just went in. And then that should be kind of the halfway point. You were worried the most about that one and that's where you got good news. Well, at least that's something, right? Those are looking good. I'm gonna let them cool back down <laughs> super puffy pastry actually do this a bit quicker so that's what they look like without putting beans and honestly I'm okay with this because well we don't have to fool around with digging beans out of there, which I would rather not do. Yeah, I we're always worried about you, Annie. And as always, yeah, keep us posted. That's actually something that Hitch commented on. It was really cute. He's like, wow, like your your community shares that info with you. And I was like, yeah, we're like super close, all of us. He's like, yeah, mine don't. Aw, Scaramouche, good to see you. The beans stuck in the gluten-free ones. Like not completely where it tore apart, the shell but they definitely were a bit of a pain to try and get out and i didn't think it was worth the effort so we opted for no beans and the risk of maybe losing a bit of space in the tart shell but it doesn't seem like we did
Just like I said, I think I would just not use that crust recipe next time. I have one that is a bit easier to work with. Thank you very much, Sugar Siren, for the follow. Welcome in. It is a nice feeling, though, like finally getting these tarts in the oven for the last time. These are a lot of work. But that's also why they taste so good in the end, right? Cookie made his first deviled eggs today. Can't believe you haven't made them for yourself before. They're not that hard, right? They're pretty simple to make. Yeah, I don't often ever make those for myself either is the one, the one time that I would typically get deviled eggs was at like family functions, but because I don't live in that province anymore, I don't really get my deviled eggs fix. I haven't had that in years. You'll go for groceries Monday and make rhubarb cake. That was the other thing I was thinking of is like rhubarb cake or rhubarb muffins. Absolutely adore those. Tis the season. <laughs> and I did see rhubarb at this store not too long ago, but it didn't look nearly as good as what my brother brought. So thanks brother Bran and Louise. I've not made a ton of tarts before either. Of like all the years that I was a pastry chef, tarts were never a thing that I made. This is why though, is because it's just too laborious and the restaurant can't afford to pay someone to make these all the time for a menu. Okay, last scoop here. There's only a little bit of filling left. That looks good, guys. I am into it. Well, I'm glad we didn't lose all of this space for the filling. Rhubarb cake tomorrow will be in the Discord that another viewer is going to post. Her grandma's, yes. Yeah, Scaramouche. I'm a better eater than I am a chef or baker. We were talking earlier, Scaramouche, about people that eat to live, so they simply just like eat so they don't die, or people like me who live to eat. It's like I am all about food in my life. Okay, just popping the gluten-free ones up top. This big pan is going in. This will probably take like a good 25 to 30 minutes with the amount that is on this tray. It's pretty heavy. So we'll just kind of follow in with that timer that we already have going. Holy smokes. We've made it. The tarts are in the oven, guys. Okay, so the only thing we have left for those is the vanilla cream cheese topping, but that can be made later because they have to cool well before we top them. So now we can finally work on lunch. Holy, what a day it has been. So real quick, here is our black cod that has been marinating for 
almost four hours now. That's really good. That should be very tasty. And then prior to this, so we already cut up our cauliflower and broccoli for grilling. So we can dress that up pretty soon here. I'm just gonna pack this flour away. Gluten-free flour. And then we just have to get some rice boiling on the stove top. And then while that is cooking, we can finish cooking the fish and the vegetables. Oh, Sam says cook his fish too. He must be done soon. Cook the Sammy's fish too. Rotate the gluten-free ones. And then let's do another eight minutes on the clock for those. Now we have eight minutes to do some other stuff. Okay, that's gone. Quick little cleanup. Okay, rice. Nice little pot of rice. I'm just gonna cook one cup for Sam and I. And that will equal out to two cups or so once it's all cooked. That's more than enough for us. And then as always for my stovetop rice, I love to dry toast the kernels before boiling. And that way all the kernels stay separate and they taste like a little bit nutty, right? Toasted rice. It's a thing. And this is jasmine rice. We'll pop that onto the burner on a medium high heat. go. And so sesame rice, I'm going to mix some sesame oil in after it's cooked, as well as sesame seeds. So let's see if they need to be toasted, I think. Just some white sesame seeds. So anytime like seeds or nuts, they should always be toasted. Just get a better flavor. Gotta call it a day, Judo. Only got four hours of sleep per night last week. Oh my gosh, you better catch up on some rest then. Also, Scaramouche, your friend and I went to Maryland for the blue crabs. They dumped a bunch of them in front of us and handed you the mallet. Shell bits were flying all over, guts spilled on the table, children were terrified, looked over at her and said, this is why we work so hard. Exactly. Have fun with it, right? So we can toast up the sesame seeds in the oven since it's going. You don't need a lot either. Do like a tablespoon worth. And then all I did was put it in this like little pie pan. but I'm gonna do that a little bit later because it's only gonna take about a minute or so. While the rice is toasting up, let's get our water ready for it. So we'll need two cups of water for our one cup of rice kernels. And I suppose we should also start to think about our griddle pan starting to heat up because it takes a little bit to heat up and then we'll do two separate cooks of the vegetables just because we won't fit them all on at once. 
Where's that big guy? Crabs are so good. Yeah, you're not from Maryland, but you live there now and absolutely love it. Yeah, you've been really getting into the crabs lately. Hey, Cookie. It's a good time to get some water. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this pan, our griddle pan, onto a medium heat as well. Let's keep stirring our rice every minute or so to make sure it's toasting evenly. And then once it looks like about half of the kernels are toasted, which I'm not sure if you guys can see here, but they start to look like more white than translucent is where they start. Once about half of those are toasted, we can pour the water in. Oh, it's going to start to heat up in here real quick. Yeah, blue crab meetup once this is all over. I'm in. We're good guys. So you should have a nice sizzle when you pour the water in. I need one more cup. And then that's gonna come up to a boil. So this is an East Indian method of cooking rice and this is how they keep it super fluffy so it's not simmered it's pretty much boiled so let's lid that and that'll come up quicker i'm gonna do just a quick little spray on this guy with some non-stick just for the first time and then typically after that you're good to go so that's heating up let's pop over here I'm gonna get a much bigger bowl for our vegetables. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna just divide them. We'll just keep it separate. Okay, and then Cooking Girl was asking earlier if we had dressed this with anything yet. We have not, but I always like to use olive oil. Hey, Strike Nun, good to see you. No one in your family really eats seafood and your girlfriend is a vegetarian. You just get a couple crabs from the store and pretend you're doing a real boil. Love that, man. Yeah, you still gotta live your life, right? Okay, so a bit of olive oil. We don't need a ton because I find that if we add too much, it'll kind of flare up on the grill. But we need enough so that the vegetables don't stick or dry out as they cook. And then the other thing that we're gonna do, once we add salt to the vegetables, that's gonna start to draw out some moisture from them. And that will also help them cook up better on the grill pan. So a nice little sprinkle now, and then we'll toss that up. I'm not seasoning this with anything crazy because we're gonna make up a nice, quick ginger scallion sauce to go with the grilled vegetables. That's our second timer for our tarts. How's it looking? Not quite there. I'm gonna do a swivel. And I'm going to do three more minutes on the timer for our gluten-free ones. Okay, so back to our veggies, oiled and salted. So let's do some cracked pepper. 
recipe testing for your state fair entries this weekend. You've got an idea you want to try. Cornstarch. What? Oh, any random ingredient. <laughs> I was like, you're making cornstarch? <laughs> that was good. Okay, what's your idea? It's a bread baking competition. Oh. Glazed donut burgers. Oh, that's why Nike's sad. I was like, why is Nike sad? Chimkin tomato soup, Annie. Yum. Toss our purple cauliflower and our regular broccoli with our oil and salt and pepper. And then we should be able to get these on the pan relatively soon. We want it nice and coated with the oil and seasonings. That rice is popping. I, will, I always put a lid on the rice so I can hear it come up to a boil because it starts to rattle. And then that way it doesn't boil over on my stove top when I have my back turned. The lid is like my little security system. <laughs> okay, so that rice should be done in, oh, about 10 minutes. And that's okay if the rice is done a little bit ahead of time because it does stay nice and hot in the pot when it's done. So veggies over to the stove top. I'm gonna get this fish out and start kind of prepping it for the pan because that's also gonna be quick. Nice and hot in the pot. Yes, exactly. You're making taco bread? Okay, you have to explain this madness, Strike Nun. I'm, I'm loving it already. Taco bread. It's like pizza bread, but better? <laughs> Timer's about to go off. Can't move. Can't look away. How are these gluten-free tarts doing? Oh, they're almost done now. I think still like another five. They're not looking as jammy as I'm liking. Okay, let's open this up. So this has been marinating for just over four hours. Miso, mirin, and sugar. Mirin is a cooking wine. If you want, you can add sake though. So I'm just gonna open up this bag and then we're gonna blot off the marinade. We don't wanna cook the fish with a ton of marinade on it because it could potentially like burn since we're pan frying it. So that's the reason why we leave it in the marinade for a bit longer so the fish can absorb all the flavoring since we're gonna like kind of wipe most of it off. Going to stuff a bread with taco meat, onions, tomatoes, and cheese. That sounds really good. I need another piece of towel here. What style is it gonna be, Strike Nun? Like a, like a regular kind of like white sandwich bread? I want the top part of the filet to be like really nice and smooth. And then there is still pin bones in here. 
that will have to take off after it's cooked though, or take out. We can't really take pin bones out of black cod ahead of time because it tears up the meat. It's so delicate. That looks good though. <laughs> we can see the fish again. Bobka braid would probably fall apart. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. So set that fish aside, guys, and now it's gonna start to come up to room temp, which is what we want. We want the fish to be a little bit warmed before it goes in the pan because it cooks nice and even that way. So let's actually turn on that pan. I'm gonna go medium heat for that. And then our grill pan is ready. So let's actually start with the cauliflower. This should take about five to seven minutes, depending on the size that you cut your vegetables, depending on the heat of your stove, etc. So five to seven minutes. We don't want to crowd the pan too, too much. Because then we kind of go away from grilling and lean more towards steaming when there's not enough air circulating. But I think we got all of this on at once, which is pretty amazing. So colorful. Okay, so we can just put the cauliflower, once it's been cooked, we can put it back into the bowl that we dressed it in. And then the broccoli will be next. Looking like our rice is almost done. Just gonna grab a spoon and give it a little look-see here. So we're looking for all the liquid to be cooked out bottom should be nice and dry. We are almost there. And then we're just going to put a lid on that and take it off of the heat. We are very, very close. Yeah, a large stuffed bun. What's the other thing? Strike then, have you seen... Christina Tosi's her bagel bombs that she fills with stuff. It's like a filled bagel, pretty crazy. But that's an idea that I'm kind of thinking that you maybe could put through to your taco bread. Okay, that should be the timer for our gluten-free tarts. And yeah, we're looking very close here, almost there is it's just starting to get like messy and jammy. So I'm gonna do a couple more minutes still. One, two, three. Okay, rice off, pop that lid on there and then we'll just go over to our trivet here and that'll stay hot. And then right before we serve, we'll mix in some of our toasted sesame oil and toasted sesame seeds. That pan is almost ready. Whenever you're cooking fish at home, we do not want to fry it in olive oil because that could potentially burn and taste a little bit bitter. So always go with a high temp oil, something like canola or grapeseed. And then if you want a touch of extra flavor at the end, you can do a little nub of butter just to finish, but only at the end. So this pan is looking like it's pretty much ready. I don't know if we're quite ready yet. So let's take a look at the cauliflower before we put our fish in. Oh, 
taco casserole, cornbread with taco meat and toppings in it. Kind of like a Mexican shepherd's pie. What? That sounds good, Jiggles. Oh, we're getting some nice grill marks. I actually think I am gonna flip all these over. Mm, maybe not. We're gonna let that keep going. Not quite there. Close, but not quite. Just these last few pieces that I put on can use a bit more time. And yeah, by no means are they getting overcooked or too dark, right? Okay, so we have our other trivet here for our other tarts. Put our fish beside our pan, and while we're waiting for the cauliflower, let's just toast up our sesame seeds since we can keep an eye on them. Feeling good, guys. I'm just gonna take that off of the heat for now. Let's grab out some scallions for our quick sauce here. I really don't want to forget this because I think it's going to complement the fish really nicely too. our ginger. Those are good, guys. Look at the burbles. Is that jammy enough? I like how it kind of got like charred on the top almost. I think we're good. So those were the gluten-free ones. I'm gonna pop the other ones up to a higher rack so they can get a bit of browning now too. sesame seeds. Maybe 30 more seconds. And then I'm also going to turn up the oven to 400 Fahrenheit. I'm feeling good, Cookie. Yeah, those should like cool off and just be wonderful, I'm thinking. Once we get our cream cheese drizzle on there for a little bit of color contrast, I'm liking it. sesame seeds are just lightly toasted. They just have to be golden brown. That is it. And then last timer for the tarts. I'm gonna do six minutes. The cauliflower is smelling like it's done now, or at least ready to be flipped. Smells like a bit of caramelization has happened. And like I said, we want some color on here, but we also want it to keep its texture too. So we don't want it to go completely mushy. And this pan actually does a great job for cooking vegetables evenly. The only thing we're missing is the wonderful flavor from the charcoal of the grill, right? Okay, now that those have been flipped, I think two more minutes. Hi, Sammy. How are you? Good. 
Couple more minutes on that. So while we wait, let's make up our sauce. Thanks, John. Appreciate that, man. Those are some nice beets. Those are beets. So trim off the ends of our green onion. We're gonna keep that in that. And then I always peel the bottom part too, where it's kind of like stringy. Get that off of there. I'm actually pumped that Sam made it home for like lunch, lunch time. How's his leg? What was happening to his leg? <laughs> Did something happen to your leg? I don't know. Titan's asking, how's your leg? I said, I don't know. Oh yeah, I knew he was gonna come in with something like that. From J dragging around your ball and chain. <laughs> he laughed, even though he was walking away. <laughs> so good. Yeah, it's heavy, <laughs> real heavy. Scaramouche, you're not even ready for these. It's like, Sam, what, what have you brought in here? Beat that beat up. I think we have to tend to our cauliflower. Can you hear the sizzles? It's really going for it. I'm gonna pop some of the florets like standing up as well, if you can. Kind of use the other pieces to prop it up if you need to. We're almost there and then it's broccoli time. And this is why you don't start cooking your fish until basically everything else is ready. Okay, we're gonna thinly slice our scallions. Oh, beautiful, thank you. Yeah. Chopping. Okay, next one's <laughs> chopping ASMR. Love it. it. It might still become a thing. This might still become a thing. And Wednesdays on Cook with Kate, check out our ASMR stream. <laughs> chopping vegetables. Yeah, I could see that being a Wednesday thing. I don't know why. So we're chopping it fine because this is like a sauce, right? Or something that will be spooned over the vegetables. So you want it nice and delicate. There we go. Yeah, if you beat someone with that beat, it would hurt. That's a weapon for sure, Scaramouche. There's our scallion. I think we are going to take off the cauliflower and put the broccoli in the pan. Boom. Yeah. I like how it still keeps its color too. Perfect. Next up, broccoli. 
I think the broccoli will cook a bit quicker than the cauliflower. That's that tart timer. So many tarts today. But I'm so excited because I get to actually enjoy some. That's why it was worth all of the effort. Oh no, we just won't be able to fit everything, I think. Maybe we will. Boom. We good. Okay, so that will take definitely five to seven minutes again. We're smoking it up in here. Those are looking almost done. Hey guys, they're burbling up again. I think one more minute, actually maybe two, two minutes, one, two. And then our tarts are done. Yeah, you had to go help people. How dare they, Scooter Beach? <laughs> How dare they? Okay, I'm gonna peel up some ginger. I'm gonna use like an inch off of here and we're gonna grate it so it's nice and fine. So I'm using the back of my paring knife to take the skin off. And then we don't waste as much of the ginger, the flesh. Just like that. Come back over with our microplane and then we're just gonna grate that over. So this is gonna eliminate any of like the ginger thread, I guess. Fibers, whatever you wanna call them. They're pretty tough though. So something like a sauce, I always like to grate the ginger. The hairs, that's what we'll call them. Those little hairs that we see there sticking up. Such a weird mouth feel on those. I might actually peel up a bit more. How are the tarts looking? They are almost ready to come out of the oven, Scooter Beach. I'll show you in, well, two seconds. <laughs> and then I can finally shut this hot thing off. Who bakes in the summer? What is this madness? Check it out. They're all jammy and golden. I'm loving them. So those were all the regular ones. And then the gluten-free ones are done. Finally, seeing an end to this day. <laughs> I actually made up this menu thinking it would be pretty simple. But there was a part of me like knowing that the tarts maybe would give us a run for our money. Yeah, bake at like 11 p.m., right? And then you're not roasting the rest of the day. These are the things we have to think about. Okay, we got our scallions and ginger. I like to add lime juice to this for a bit of acidity. I think it complements the grilled vegetables really well. We can even do a bit of zest. 
zest and juice. like that. Give that a little tackaroo. Roll our lime to loosen up the juices. I know that's the thing Greek is when it gets like muggy like this it's brutal because yeah it's not that hot out but just the clouds are like holding down all the humidity. It just makes it feel really hot. <laughs> Nike. I don't know. I roast things every day, especially people. My Lanta. I love roasting people. I love you, dude. <laughs> Celsius. Yeah, it's 19 Celsius. Hey, Shacked. Good to see you. The hitch visit was awesome. We ended up making him rotisserie chicken from the Ronco with some dilled potatoes, like dilly butter potatoes and sour cream and a salad from the garden. And he was like really satisfied, he said. He's like, I feel very satiated and I know that it's all good things for like his recovery after the bike ride. Yeah, such a legend, that guy. Yeah, I was sneaking in the background. We we might have done like a little hitch snipe, I suppose we can call it. I don't know though, because it was like planned all together. Yeah. It was like we had the idea, I don't know, for a while. So a bit of olive oil just to get our sauce consistency here. also to dull down some of the lime juice. So see how this is coming together now? And then just a touch of salt is all we need. And we got this really glorious like green and yellow sauce. So just gotta season it and we're good. Now I think we are good to start thinking about cooking that fish. And the sauce is pretty powerful, so a lot goes a long way. Mmm. So good. Yeah, we went and picked him up as he was passing through. And then the next morning, we just, like, drove to work with him. And he went from there. Okay, let's get this pan back on. Nice medium-high heat. Let's get a little check on our broccoli. Oh yeah, that is grilling up real nice. A little flip. I think I'm gonna do the fish and rice together on the same plate or in a bowl. And then we'll do the vegetables as like a side dish. I think it'll just look better that way. Almost there, Salmon. Yum. Are the brocks dry? Nope, they were tossed with olive oil and some salt and pepper. The best thing for your recovery from lack of meatitis is for you to take you a four rib roast. Make you, not take you. I was like, where are we taking this roast, Hoju? <laughs> yeah, take him. Take him the four rib roast. Exactly. Okay. Look what we got fresh in. 
from the Sammy Men. Some beautiful toasted sesame oil, but I don't think we're gonna get into it because gotta use up this other stuff first. Okay, that pan is almost there. We'll do the rice together over here. Pop that there. Sesame oil is quite strong, so we don't need a lot here to get the sesame flavor throughout. So a couple drops. And then I think I'll just do a little pinch of salt as well. And we're just gonna toss that together. Kind of coat the rice kernels and loosen them up. See how all the rice kernels are separate now? Really lovely. And it should start to get a bit fragrant as well. Should smell like sesame, like nutty. And then we'll save the toasted sesame seeds for garnish. So that can still just keep chilling over here now. Just gonna have a little bite. Mmm. Perfect. Really, really good. So we're looking for a little wisp of smoke and then the fish can be dropped in the pan. I'm gonna do the fish flesh side down first so we get a nice sear and then we'll flip it over to the skin side to finish it off. What a day, guys. And then I'm gonna take this broccoli off as well. Definitely good. And now we solely get to focus on our beautiful fish. Because that's definitely the most expensive part of the meal. We do not want to mess it up. Get that hot pan off of there. Yeah, always kiss the chef. Thank you. I don't know what happened, guys, but that rule is long forgotten. <laughs> I don't know what happened, guys. Okay, ready for the drop? Beauty. So you always wanna get that sizzle before you drop it in. This is a big guy, so that's gonna take a bit. And then with the miso black cod, you always wanna make sure you have enough oil as well, because it might want to stick with a bit of sugar in that marinade. It might want to. Okay, so that's gonna take, oh, five to seven minutes as well. We're cooking that on a medium high heat so we can get color and flavor. Yeah, the restaurants tend to not enjoy that part. <laughs> yeah, that is looking amazing. Now we can start to think about plating. Those are some big cuts. This is definitely like five ounce. And then that's probably both four. So the smaller ones are gonna cook quicker. Let's get our handy dandy fishula. It's a thing. I'm gonna turn down the pan a bit. It looks like it's cooking a bit quick. Also, if you're worried, just take it off of the heat. That looks unreal. So this is what I was talking about. That's the color. I did, yeah, there should be three there, Sam. Holy, did you see how that just like shrunk up? 
That was really, really weird. Oh! This one kind of wants to stick, it seems. Oh, no, it's still good. And so black cod is very fatty, guys. That's why it's so delicate. And that's also why it's very expensive. Yeah, it looks freaking unreal. The way that the miso caramelizes. Now you guys are probably saying, Kate, that's burnt! But it's definitely not, okay? If you look back to the recipes online for the miso black cod is they take it pretty far. And some people have even grilled it. Just feeling that fish maybe one-ish minute. You're eating fish while watching this. Yeah, shiggity. And you are correct, Dust. Yeah, this is one of the fish that we cut up on stream three weeks ago now, if you want to go check the VOD out. You're off to drive home from work. Have a wonderful drive, Scooter Beach. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'm sure we'll see you tomorrow. Bye! Looking so good, I can't look away. Sammy loves big cuts and he cannot lie. All your viewers can't deny. When Kate walks in and sticks the cod in his face, he gets sprung. <laughs> that was like, we, we kind of lost it at the end there, Hoju, but I, I like it. Yeah, very, very close. See how it's like getting more firm and springing back up? That's what we want. And then we can easily see the bones now too. We don't like bones. Clear the area. I think we're good, guys. What I'm gonna do is just turn that off and we're just gonna take it off of that burner. And I'm gonna let it finish for one minute off of the heat. So while we're waiting, let's plate up our vegetable dish. So grilled broccoli and purple cauliflower dressed with a scallion ginger and lime sauce. Super refreshing. Sable fish is a very rich and fatty fish. So we definitely need something here to cut all that richness. Thought this would be really lovely and healthy for us. And I also love making extra grilled vegetables to like have the next day as snacks. Whether you eat it cold or warm, up to you. So let's just like make some layers here, pile it up, maybe build a bit of height. massive and I love it. Broccoli and cauliflower mountain. Next up, 
actually, we'll spoon the sauce on right before we serve. Otherwise, it'll kind of go to the bottom of the plate right now before we take a photo. So real quick for our fish, guys. Not sure if you'll see the bones that I'm picking, but they should be right in the center here. I don't even know. Do I have to take it off of the skin first, Sam? Or are we just going to have to eat it with the bone-in? We might just have to go with the uh, team bone-in, guys. But yeah, I guess even just like a close-up of this, like this is definitely the presentation piece. Literally mouth-watering. Okay, so sometimes we can sneak the bones out after it's cooked, but like I said, it's so delicate that even then we might rip it apart. Let's just carry on. I actually think I want to plate the fish and rice in a little bowl. Sam has a wild animal in his grasp and I don't know what he really had. <laughs> oh, you got the fly. Sammy just catching flies with his hands. Karate kid. Purple poop for days. Yep, Astro. Okay, sesame rice. So we just toss this with a bit of sesame oil after it was cooked. Super fragrant. Just put a nice pile of that in the bottom of the dish. Kind of make it like a bed for the fish to sit on, right? And then our garnish of the toasted sesame seeds. I want to make it like a bed almost as well. So you really want to be able to see the sesame seeds and also taste them. Yeah, very, very nice looking so far, Kate. Looks great. This though. There might be a bit of stuff in the bottom here. Just some juices. A little bit of fat there. That is it. This is simplicity in its finest form. So we're gonna leave this guy just popped up here for now. Let's dress our veggies. So our ginger scallion lime sauce. And I love to just like do kind of dollops or spoonfuls in random parts. And then kind of as you pick away at it, it, it distributes itself. And like I said, this is actually a recipe that I've adapted from David Chang. I believe this is served with his bow sam. It's like pork lettuce wraps of sort. Really lovely with that too. Okay. Did I lose my phone? Oh, it's time to take a photo. You can't anymore. <laughs> yeah, Marmite grilled cantaloupe. What? Oh, got that ringer on. This is the view I think I'm looking for. Yep. Ooh, 
we. And now, from the other, other side. Because we got to show veggies some love too, right? Okay. Get a fork. We made it. Move over, veggies. But seriously. Okay, so this like should just literally flake apart. Holy. If that's not melt in your mouth. Mm. Like what? Look at that. You don't really get like a ton of in your face, like salty miso flavor from it. Is I find it just really complements the fish really well when we caramelize it like that. So we get this like nice caramelized, I guess, miso flavor. So it's like sweet and salty. And then that is paired with something really, really kind of plain because the fish is so rich, like I keep saying. You don't want to pair the fish with something like a fatty side dish as well because it would be really overwhelming to your palate. Mmm. And I have to say the sesame is really complementing it well. Just adding to the nuttiness. I left the skin on to cook it, Jay Frick, just to keep it more moist than it already is. Mm. Also, yeah, keeping the skin on fish, it's just easier to cook. It doesn't fall apart as much if you keep that like kind of glue on the back part, right? Mm. Okay, like I seriously have to take a break from that because it's really unctuous. And like, this is where we get into our veggies. I'm gonna go for a smaller piece. Yep. That's the palate cleanser for sure. Mmm. And then go for a bite of rice. It's seriously deadly. Uh, carrots are tomorrow, my dude. Yeah, carrots are tomorrow. Okay, so the veggies obviously have grill marks on them, but still a bit of crunch. It's not completely, like, soggy. Grilled broccoli is still my favorite. The cauliflower is good, but it's not as good as the broccoli. Mmm. And yeah, well balanced. I'm definitely going to crush this after. Okay. Before I get lethargic from keep, keeping on eating that, let's finish off our tarts, guys. Those couple of bites, though, are definitely going to hold me over for like the next 15 minutes. That was needed. Yeah, the fattiness of the fish is going to help us stay full. Yeah, really good crunch on the veg two cookie. It's true. Okay. So our tarts, we finally <laughs> made it. Um, I think they turned out really great. It was like, they're definitely rustic. It looks like a grandma made them. And that's what I was going for. So the six larger ones we're selling and then possibly six of these tomorrow as well and then sammy and i have half a dozen for ourselves too so i thought a really nice topping to go with this would be some vanilla cream cheese like a drizzle just to help balance out the 
acidity of the rhubarb or the sourness. Sam, you're not getting into fish right now? No, I need to have this. Okay. I'm just, I'm just making sure you're good. Okay, so we have our cream cheese that's been softening. And I think I'm just going to mix that. So we're gonna whip it up with a little bit of icing sugar to sweeten it up just a touch. And then obviously some vanilla bean. And then hopefully be able to put it into a piping bag. And then make a nice drizzle over top. So let's get a bowl. A bowl, two spoons, and a whisk, I'm thinking. This guy asked, did you ever think of a backpack in Europe? <laughs> Shucked, yeah, just a little drizzle. That's my uh, rapper name, Little Drizzle. Key Lime Pie Nation. That's where Scat's at. If we see the Key Limes in the store, Scat, then we'll do a Key Lime Pie for you. That's what I said. I was like, I think we're too late now. It's like summer nine months a year where you live. Whoa. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Sam would die. Yeah, prosciutto wrapped grilled melon. I was trying to figure out what you guys were saying the light meal for summer. Prosciutto wrapped melon is lovely. And yeah, grilling melon. Like these are things you don't think of, right? Super good. So the icing sugar also helps loosen up the cream cheese to give it a nicer like drizzling consistency. So that's why we add that as well. And then as we start to work it in, oh, I might regret this whisk. It should loosen up. <laughs> She's gonna regret the whisk instantly. But you never know. No, nope, there's no regrets. No regrets. Okay, definitely need more of the icing sugar. And that's kind of how I base the consistency of the icing. Mind you, it does add some sweetness, so keep that in mind too, right? You still wanna taste the cream cheese, not just the sugar. And I'm just doing this by hand, guys, because I did not see a reason dirtying the stand mixer for this. Yeah, that's looking good. So I just have to get that out of there. Get it out. Just like that. And then we can just finish with mixing it with the spatula. We'll transfer that 
into a piping bag once it has the vanilla in it. And then we'll taste it. It might need a pinch of salt. Depending on how that sugar is with the cream cheese. But this is going to be like a nice thin kind of drizzle over the top. Really delicate. Just to make you go like, oh wow, there's just that little bit of effort put in. I appreciate that. Yeah, grilled stone fruit with balsamic drizzle. Also good. It's true mythical. I really like grilling. Like grilled fruit, definitely overrated. Or underrated, sorry. Underrated. And then the only thing we have to remember because we're putting dairy on top of these is they'll just have to stay in the fridge now. And we want this nice and smooth before we put it in the piping bag. Grilled beef hot dogs and fries for dinner. Sometimes that's all you need, man. Every now and then, you just need a hot diggity dog. You've never had stone fruit before. That is insane cooking koalas. Titan, your pear trees are full. Who else was saying that their pear tree is absolutely full? Was it Cook and Grow? We just vanillified our cream cheese drizzle. Yum. Would you guys rather have a nice, really like white cream cheese icing with like a fake vanilla extract but having it really nice and white or would you rather have this one where it's a bit brown in color from the vanilla beans but you can see the vanilla beans in it what would you rather have your neighbor's got a cherry tree nice we did have one but it was not doing very good at all okay Maybe not that one. Actually, yeah, I do want that one. Do you see my little like piping station I have here? It's pretty sweet. I think we can easily fit this little piping bag and there's silicone too so I'm thinking like a little a little hole just like that yeah obvious choice except not for sadly everyone yeah exactly that's why I was, I was thinking about it cookie like I wonder which is better what would people choose Okay, there's that. <laughs> Last time I used this little contraption, I totally forgot to put the stopper on the bottom of the piping bag and it was like a really runny icing. Just flowed right through onto the counter. I was like, what is all over the counter? Oh yeah, just the icing. <laughs> oh yeah, that was for the hot cross buns. Okay, so see how handy this thing is? So it flips over so that this can rest on your hand. If Strike Nun was in here still, I think he'd be kind of into this little contraption. And this is something I've had like since I kind of started cooking or when I first went to culinary school. It doesn't get used that often, but every now and then when you need to pipe something, 
super handy. Yeah, pipe it up. Okay, we have a bit extra. Vetan, thank you for the follow. Welcome in. Okay, so I'm just gonna pipe this on one because these are still cooling. So I just wanna try it for myself, right? Before we serve it to other people. I, I don't know if these are dishwasher safe, but I usually just wash it by hand as it's all silicone. So it comes with like the three piping bags and then a stand. So typically you put the piping bag in the stand to fill it and then a bunch of the tips as well. Topper off. I definitely like really filled this up. Just trying to not make it messy. So then the other thing it comes with is this clip for the top <laughs> if you don't overfill it. And then that just goes here. And then that way when you pipe, apparently it's supposed to keep it from like overflowing the top, right? For like a chef, they're probably like, what is this even? But it's actually pretty good. I'm gonna choose like a really messy one. Let's go for this one right in the middle. Super jammy. <laughs> this clip is not working at all. It's just pushing the icing out of the top. Screw it. We're doing it the other way. The proper way, I would say. Unless we just chose the wrong topper, but nope gotta go slower next time I'll, I'll send you guys a photo once I have them all topped and this piping bag dealt with but for now we're just going by taste we gotta test the crust Super flaky, holy smokes. Okay, bottom. I don't think that topper will fall off. Okay, nice. Golden brown. I'm just gonna go for a bite. Mmm. Mmm. That's better than lunch. Can you have one, Sam? He can't. Oh no. Okay, I'll eat it all. With all of the effort put into this recipe, I'm very happy to say that it's actually really delicious, guys. And I think my little kind of cream cheese topper is super good too. Cause like I said, it's kind of cutting the, the bit of sourness from the rhubarb. He's full. Yeah, he's just full. Mmm. <laughs> I know I bash the crust a lot, but it's actually like one of the best crusts I've ever eaten in my life. <laughs> Definitely the flakiest pastry I've ever made or eaten. Yeah, I'm sorry, cooking koalas. I wish you could have this. Thank you for the one bitty. <laughs> yeah, he must be tired, Titan. Exactly. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. For the amount of butter that went into the crust, I would say those are definitely worth like 
three-ish dollars each. Mm-hmm. You know it's homemade. Holy smokes, that's buttery. I know, Nike. Yeah, I'm sorry, dude. You can't have sweets either. Or just every now and then, right? Okay, guys. We finally made it. Holy smokes. What a day. Like five hours. Just gone like that. Uh, he's doing keto. He's doing keto, Titan. Okay, so tomorrow... Nike is, I believe. So tomorrow, cooking with Sammy, he's gonna be doing a coffee crusted lamb with mango chutney. Excuse me. To go along with that, we're gonna do some more potatoes. I think the potatoes are gonna be done like on the grill in a little foil packet, super delicious like that. And then some grilled carrots as well. So some fun grilling tomorrow. And I think that's it. So we'll see how that goes. It should be a fun one. Oh, Sam's got that old school recipe. There you go. So stay tuned for that tomorrow. We'll share it with you guys as well. That's from a restaurant that he used to work at. What year? Oh, dates. Yum. What year, Sam? Oh, I don't remember. He doesn't remember. He's out of it. Yeah, Sam just comes in. Okay, so same time tomorrow, guys. 11 a.m. Pacific time is when we will see you. Yes, thank you for staying. The whole stream dust. It was lovely. If you guys want any of the recipes from today, the entire tart recipes in Discord, the miso black cod recipe is in discord as well uh who are we raiding do we want to raid hitch sam says yeah okay he says we want to raid hitch let's do it be like oh long time no see and plus i want to see where he's at where is he making it to yeah mrs w exactly right it's like we're ready come on kate if you don't raid Hitch, well, what are you doing? Okay, friends, thank you so much to everyone for those long-term resubs today. Holy smokes, 27 months, what? We had a 22 month from Nike. We also had some shorter term subs as well. So thanks guys for returning and chilling with us. Thank you guys for all of the biddies. And then I also wanna do a shout out to Scat for purchasing something from the merch store. He got a sticker. Okay, friends, I will see you tomorrow. Let's go see where Hitch is at. Make sure he's okay. Thanks for all the love today. Stay healthy, stay safe, and contact me if you need anything. I'm hitting this button. Hitting it. Yeah, the lamb tomorrow is gonna be so good. Dust, so good. Okay, see you guys then gonna go relax the rest of the day.